Here's taking so long to look. If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you going to scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just going to sit there and let them burn? This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to the program. No, this is not audio only. I'm just showing you a screen right now. This is Spirit Behind the Music, episode one. And before we get into it, don't forget you can reach us at don'tletthemburn.com. You can also reach us on uh, my alternate YouTube channel, which is Hurricane 7. Check out the music video. I hardly promote the song. It's been out for four months, as you can see right here. Uh, you can also check out our Teespring, where you can get a shirt. Shirts are coming out pretty nice. I think some people might even give some testimonies regarding the shirt and whatnot, so we'll see those soon. Here goes the parlor. Check us out on parlor. Give us a follow. Give us a share. And tonight, we have my friend William Ramsey. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me back, Chris. Yes, sir. Glad to have you. Thanks. So tonight, we're going to get into some material found again in this book. Pew. Children of the Beast, Children of the Beast, and the Beast, as he called himself, Alistair Crowley. Um, he is not the devil himself, but man, he sure thinks he is. <laughs> All right. So All right. Um, he said he wanted to be his chief of staff. Or chief of staff. Do these people actually know what they're doing? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously uh, it's obvious that the devil is dark and and evil and you know just everything that you don't want to mix up in everything crowley did was disgusting the things he did with children women men all this darkness and yet you want to be the right hand man to lucifer crazy crazy pretty crazy well, he had a crazy life and left a path of destruction through his whole existence yeah to the present really yeah uh, so before we start for, for people that don't know you Tell them about yourself, what you do, and um, the products that you have. Well, I was uh, formerly an attorney. I still am a member of the State Bar of California. I was definitely a parapolitical researcher after being in D.C. for three years from 95 to 98 and uh, really kind of gave up on mass media, corporate media. So, And also, I questioned my own education. So I kind of went through the standard educational process and kind of left a, a, bit, a little bitterness and disillusionment. So I was definitely interested in reading other things and, you know, was interested in 9-11 and 9-11, the numerology of 9-11 kind of led me back to Crowley, Crowley's numerology. Why is the 11 so much? There was a guy by the name, of, I can't remember his name right now, but he was kind of keyed into this numerology. I didn't really know much about magic. And then uh, I kind of wrote books about it. So my first book was Aleister Crowley, Prophet of Evil, or Prophet of Evil, Aleister Crowley, 9-11 and the New World Order. So I wrote about Crowley. Really, it's really a bio of Crowley. And I tried to focus on other people's opinions of Crowley, not just his writing, but what people who knew Crowley at that time. Yeah. And then I wrote a book about the West Memphis Three, which is a very dark tale that involved Crowley as well. And then this book, which was really my attempt to kind of see what his cultural influence on and music in particular as well, or uh, in on the 20th century. So I kind of it was an exhausting research task. I think I have close to 800 footnotes, but yeah. you can see what I read. And uh, Crowley really is there with all these other cultural figures. So I still was in definitely interested in that. And uh, yeah, I made some documentaries. So I have this book, but I also have a documentary on my Vimeo channel, Children, uh, Children of the Beast as well. It's about two hours and 45 minutes. It includes a lot of pictures and things like that so people can kind of see the research that's in that book as well. Mm. Um, but I have five videos on Vimeo and uh, that's really it. So I'm still curious about Crowley, Crowley's influence, probably the most influential occultist, written occultist of all time. We know from the Bible, they talk about the Witch of Endor or Jonas and Jambres who uh, contended with Moses, the priests of Egypt. And uh, Paul wrote about them. And they're actually not mentioned, I think, in the Old Testament, if my memory serves me correct, but... Uh, also, Simon Magus, who talked to Peter um, mm -hmm. and wanted that power that Peter had, coveted that. Um, Peter did not give that to him. So we know from the Bible there's definitely these occultists, but then 
in the mo into the modern age, I think we can see this Crowley was kind of resurrecting or kind of even growing back, going all the way back to Sumeria, kind of some of those ideas. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, again, it is Spirit Behind the Music. And I totally forgot to do something. Right? So I'm going to do it really quick right now. For those of you that are not used to this channel, you've just gotten here. You just hey, like, subscribe and share. We're going to get into some meat, but I have to show you the other segments that we have. And uh, obviously this one is Spirit Behind the Music talking about music we have paranormal shift we get into a paranormal and what the bible has to say about it we get into reign of the tech with it's all about technology uh hollywood matrix obviously all about hollywood and the crazy stuff that they do in our films apocalypse news and updates codex explained which explains some of the bible game invaders video games if you want to know about video games and the stuff in it that's the one to check out uh, Deception, The Road to Disclosure. This is connected to my documentary. And um, you'll learn more as we go on. Superheroes and Gods, Amazing Machinations, Political Edge, The Symbolic Realm, and here we are, Full 360. So, all right, let's get into uh, the meat of this conversation here. Right, if I can get back to my screen. There we go. All right, so... Alistair Crowley and his influence. Uh, in some of the screenshots here, I have people like the Beatles, I have the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, Lady Gagme, I mean Gaga, <laughs> um, Jay-Z, and a few others. Um, so who do you want to touch first? Well, I think probably one of the most influential bands of all time is the Beatles. And I think that their connection to Crowley and people who had admired Crowley, specifically Timothy Leary, I think that's an important place to start all right let's start the Beatles, and they had a sergeant peppers the sergeant pepper album had um alistair crowley on the front correct so that was it and, and there's an argument that even sergeant pepper himself is a reference to alistair crowley so crowley's in there but sergeant pepper if you kind of play the word sergeant is like an official title peppers black and crowley was a black magician so it says the intro to the song is 20 years ago today right from 1967 that's when Crowley died Crowley was born in 1875 died in 1947 so and you can kind of see that the Beatles were huge change agents cultural agents something that they I think they were kind of uh, became not initially before Paul McCartney or after what I think I think Paul McCartney was switched out so most people don't agree with that but after he got switched out of the band, they uh, changed a lot of their kind of ideas towards uh, open drug use, mysticism, Eastern mysticism, things yeah. like that, that weren't as kind of milk toast as the early, early Beatles. So, um, yeah. But and yeah. that um, they, their Eastern influence came through people like the Maharishi Mash Yogi, right. who helped to bring uh, the idea of yoga to our populace here. And others, but that's that's one of the, the, the main leaders there. And here, as you see over here, people, this little figure right here, that's Alistair Crowley. Right there. So they put all their influential minds on the cover. And um, you can't deny it. <laughs> but I think that they were similar to Crowley also in that they were trying to create an alternate culture in opposition to Christianity. And I think they did it. So Lennon was talking about it all the time, John Lennon. Right. He's probably the most vocal of them saying, you know, we're bigger than Jesus. Christianity is going to go away. Um, he, you know, he made all of these. And those were very controversial statements. Today, yeah. they wouldn't even be noted. But back then, that made everybody gasp. It was uh, recorded everywhere. He kind of had to back away from his original statement. But it, it was a blasphemous statement, in my opinion. And uh, I think that that was really... Kind of their point so i think they were carrying on that kind of idea of crowley creating a uh, a magical world or a magical worldview i think that they're, they're they're right in step with crowley actually in my opinion they uh had a, a album cover cover uh i don't know what the album's called but i'll try to see here uh babies baby right that was very controversial they've also made statements yeah. in the yeah that's very much it but yeah. they um, were had pictures of themselves making 
the same magical signs that Crowley makes. I think yeah. if you can look up the Beatles' magical stances or magical postures, that would probably come up on the vigil. Um, yeah. They were also seen with Jimmy Savile, who is just a monster, like a real wit, like a literal seventh son of a seventh son. Who's the seventh son of his Catholic family and uh, very much into which who's buried at which actually 25 I, I degrees that, facing east. Sorry, no, I was going to say that I know this a lot of this stuff usually goes back to some sort of Catholic family or something. Okay, well, yeah. I, I can share this screen. Let me see if I can do this. Um, here's a if you can share my screen, I can show kind of the, them with Savile. So you'll see them making these magical stances. That's out yeah. of Crowley's. It's either uh, his encyclopedia, the Equinox, I think is what's from. So you can see them making these exact magical stances. This is Crowley with the beat. I mean, this is Savile with the Beatles, and Savile was did unspeakable things. This is the Beatles kind of in a swastika stance, making the Cornuto sign, satanic sign. There's the babies. Yeah. There's Fall. I, I mean, I believe that uh, McCartney was switched out. And there's the new, and, and actually the symbolism of a birdcage is actually a well-known, not well-known, it's used in the occult, actually, to kind of symbolize something that's captured, that sings yeah. for you. Now, um, when you, sorry, when you say McCartney got um, switched out, what do you mean? Carnudo, it's like this, hand sign. No, no, but McCartney. Oh, well, so I think what happened, Mark, uh, I believe that Paul McCartney died in, he was either killed or died in an auto crash and they put some new guy in who was a talented musician. But this person right here with the mustache is the replacement to the original, the original Paul McCartney. Interesting. And it changed the, the whole dynamic of the band changed upon that replacement too. So it made a real change And this new, there's amazing videos of this guy walking around with a golden apple and it's a really heavy duty. Well, I mean, it comes from Greek mythology. Kaliste was the god of chaos or goddess of chaos in the old Greek mythology. And she had a golden apple and she would chuck that chaos golden apple and it would, it would cause uh, all kinds of uh, frictions in society and stuff like that. And there's pictures of this guy carrying the golden apple. I don't know if that would pop up on the Internet, but uh, I did just change. Um, he was changed out. He was either murdered or died in a car crash. And it used to be called, considered kind of like a an urban myth, but there's real, there's actually was a very serious study by an Italian uh, forens a forensic team that compared the old Paul to the new Paul. And there were certain elements of this new person that did not conform to the old Paul. People can rearrange your face, like really sophisticated plastic surgery can rearrange your face. They cannot change the width of the skull of your teeth. So the upper teeth, just they can't do it. They can move them around or have braces. Yeah. But the when they measured the proportion of the old Paul to this guy, it wasn't the same person. And yeah. some of the early, some of the early scenes of, I mean, clearly, I mean, it's, it's not believable, but I truly believe that he was switched out. I mean, if there's evidence, then there's evidence. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I wonder if I, I could find that online, that Italian yeah. fake. Pasta. I've never heard, heard of that before. Yeah, there's a really good researcher. I've had her on my show. Um, and she's written a book about it. But there's also really sketchy pictures of Paul in like Time Magazine. It doesn't even look like the original Paul. So, wow. yeah, no, no. And then it gets really deep because when the old um, Paul was replaced, the whole tone, tenor and the whole band changed. So right. it went from telling like love stories and things like that to, you know, cruelly like dark Eastern ideas and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, let me see. And so. Um, so, as... yeah, but that's kind of a sidetrack. Um let me see if I can find this. And there's actually a really good documentary about the Beatles online, and it's called Rotten Apple, I think. And okay. it goes in and it shows, I think it's in that documentary where Paul McCartney is holding up the fake, this apple. Okay. 
I'm no. trying to find some pictures online, but I don't find any. I, I, but I know they they had a looks like they had a um an album called Rotten Apple. Or yeah, and I think that that was actually the or Golden Apple. Sorry. Right, and I think that was actually the name of their company that they used to promote their stuff was uh, it's called Apple or something like that. So it's some, there's some symbolism there. Yeah, and they also had the Golden <sighs> Apple Award. Anyone? Interesting. <laughs> no, it's 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 not believable. But when you kind of look through, um, it becomes it's you really have it's really incredible. Let me see. Wow. I can't seem to find this this video. I Tina Foster's her name. So if you look up Tina Foster, mm -hmm. she's done most of the research on the fake kind of fake Paul. Okay. They call it plastic maca. It's he's his nickname in England is instead of McCartney, it's M A C C A, oh. and uh, you can kind of find her her interviews and including my interview with her. All right, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, right, so but she has a book. Let me see if I can find this book. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Tina Foster. All right, got it. I wrote it down. So m moving along, uh, you have within that that group we have Lenin Lenin, who um, wrote Imagine, which is the pretty much a communist manifest, communist atheist manifesto. Yes. Right. Okay. So most people it's, don't know that. It's super. It's an extremely sinister uh, song. Actually, it's very sinister, and a lot of people like dreamily listen to that. I always get creeped out when I hear Imagine. Yeah, so, now I too. nowadays when I was yeah. a child, it wasn't that creepy for me. But as I grew up, I I started hearing the atheist tones, but I didn't understand the rest of it until you know recently, with all this common and stuff coming up. You know, it's been exposed. Right, religion yeah. is an opiate. It's the distractor, and even the fool on the hill is supposed to be Christ. So if you listen to the song "Fool on the Hill," uh -huh. the fool on the hill is Christ giving the beatitudes, right? Wow. So yeah, super anti-Christian stuff. There was no, they were not. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. And here, here's the interesting. Just one more thing. This is from this this thing where Paul says his music, or fall. I think it's basically magic. There is such a thing as magic, and the Beatles was magic. It's something that has to be thought of as magic with a K, and that K is the eleventh letter of the alphabet. So you have to kind of have some kind of. So uh, knowledge of the occult to just even key into that, right? So right. you have somebody has to teach you, or you have to do some reading to understand the primacy eleven. And uh, so when you when you kind of look through um, the Beatles, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. You can read about it in my book. And their their yeah. ideas of LSD, God is everything. God is in the space between us. God is in that table. So their idea of God was almost animistic. Or that's what they're uh, promoting instead of this kind of God that lives in the heavens and is benevolent. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's 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 alarming to the untrained mind. But for us, we, this is just a casual conversation, right? <laughs> you know, I've learned so much over the last twenty years. It's just, it's crazy. Um, if we didn't have the internet too, and some of these people so that true. Out, documentaries some of it we, we wouldn't even know it so i think god is allowing us to really get information faster so we can see the evils yeah no no doubt and also we learn all it's kind of iron sharpens iron so you learn from these shows the hosts have different inputs so like even time when i'm a guest i'm still learning from the hosts things like that yeah so yeah, yeah. knowledge is definitely increasing no question as the bible would say absolutely um so Outside of the Beatles now, where you want to go, or you got more to say about them? Well, um, I think one of the interesting things before, it gets really deep, because I think that Lenin was killed by a mind-controlled assassin, so that's yeah. probably going to put me even farther off into, uh, you know, questionable territory, but... Well, um, I mean, if people study the CIA and how many artists that were actually taken out by them, it's no, no surprise. Okay. People that don't know, they, yeah, it, it'll seem a little it's weird. not believable, right? So, yeah. but the guy he was reading Catcher in the Rye, which is a known kind of manual that they use on some of these guys who are susceptible to hypnotism. Um, I can't remember the name of his assassin, but before that, like a few days before, 
uh, Lennon had an interview on Playboy with his witch wife. Like Yoko Ono was a literal witch. And they were yeah. doing all kinds of strange witch stuff involving cow tongues. And they tried. she tried to time the birth of her son, who's a very wealthy guy who makes these weird movies um, that are inspired by Kenneth Anger, make, make weird videos with the arrival of the aliens. Like, you should look it out. You'll just, you, it would fit right into all your research. I'll well, have to send that. Oh, yeah, because I'm about to pull up a video game. Okay. Yeah. what's it's, I think his name is uh, Sean Lennon, S-E-A-N -S Lennon. And if you look up that video, it's like it's right out of Lucifer Rising. It's the arrival of the aliens at the end. And that's a made very fairly recently. But going back to before Lennon died, I was just trying to get this one thing in. He said, um, the whole Beatle idea was what to do what you want, right? Take your own responsibility. Do what you want. Try not to harm other people, right? Do what thou wilt, as long as it doesn't hurt somebody. So he kind of had the Crowleyan... Um, the Crowleyan witch kind of, uh, what is it? The Wiccan idea of do what thou wilt. Yeah. And what's his name again? Sean Lennon. S-E-A-N Lennon. Okay. Let me see if I can find that. Okay. All right. I think I got it. Because I'm going to link this to a video game. <laughs> uh, I actually did a video on my, on my YouTube channel. I wonder if it'll pop up. Uh, about this, the arrival. Is he here? Yeah, so that's Sean Lennon. That I think he was the only son of Yoko Ono and Lennon. So he's very, I mean, he doesn't have to work. I think his net work is like quarter of a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah, so he makes these very idiosyncratic videos. Here it is. Let me see if I can play this. Um, I'll post the link to it. This is interesting. Let's see if I can... Can you Why see you, that yeah. in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Give I me think I posted it. Let me see if I can pop this up. Let's Is it music? Uh, it's kind of just comparing, comparing the uh, see, comparing the video to, to to Kenneth Anger. Do you think you can show my I'm, screen? Oh, okay. Let me. This is coming up here. Let me. At the stream. There you go. So this was something I did four years ago. The occult arrival, UFOs, and ritual magic at the end of the age. And so, let me see if I can turn the sound off. But you can see Lucifer rising here with the uh, alien arrival. So yeah. this is like very young, early Satanism by Kenneth Anger. And the guy who was in this, if I can show you this, this is kind of interesting. Um, his name is Donald Camel. And he did a movie called Performance with the Rolling Stones, literally when he was a kid, he sat on Aleister Crowley's knee. And uh, so he is, his dad was a friend of Crowley from Scotland. So this yeah. is John Lennon talking about aliens. So mm -hmm. if you listen to this on my, on my thing, I don't want to play the audio, but he's yeah. literally talking about his alien sighting in New York City. So I included that in this, but then his son is basically the same motif of of Kenneth Anger is included at the end of his videos. Let me see if I can find this. So let's see. Oh, there goes the lamb. Yeah, and do you remember last time we talked, we were talking about this public ritual of the yeah. rite of Bartzabel? This is a yeah. sequence from that. Okay. So let me go back to Sean Lennon. So you see these aliens right here? Right. So watch. So like he's like a mag magician. And he's summoning these aliens just like it was out of out of Kenneth Anger. Yeah. Right? So he's white, and this is like his paramour. And there's this eye of Horus hat. Right. I mean, it's just it's too much. The occult imagery is off the charts. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna show you something really quick, and I'm okay. gonna type it in case it doesn't sound familiar. All right. Okay. Um, give me a second. Add the stream. This video game. I know Destiny, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh guess who did the soundtrack? I don't know. Paul McCartney. Really? <laughs> and it's about this this sphere that comes to planet Earth. There's some destruction and whatnot. And this sphere, I think it's supposed to be the one protecting the planet. But you have all these systems um, and these, these magis and warriors and whatnot. And you have some named after gods. And whatnot, but it's all about this. This there's also this big uh, celestial threat. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah, you know, the same motif as all these alien movies, but you have to you get to fight as these warriors. A lot of them are using magic. You see this over here? Interesting, uh, yeah. Power, all that stuff. Yeah, right. it's it's not a boring game. It's the people that made uh, Halo that made this game, and Halo, you know, has its own things too. But uh, yeah, what you're describing here in that video by Lennon or Sean Lennon, it, it it's the same thing here. Okay, you just gotcha. have to get into the lore of Destiny to really find out what I'm talking about. But um, just want to point that out for people that That's are funny. either playing this game or uh, you know interested in playing the game. They even have Osiris. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, a bunch of stuff in this thing, man. This is uh, Destiny One, and they have Destiny Two. Like in the uh, in the, the the packs and what whatnot. It's always some occult theme. Interesting. Uh, pagan god or whatnot. And, you know, I, I don't want to belabor the point on, on the game because we have our own gaming section. But Right. But it's yeah. so important because I think the gaming thing, it dwarfs movies by like 10 times or something. Oh, like yeah. The amount of revenue is huge. So yes. people are spending way more time on some of these video games than watching a two-hour movie. Yeah. Uh, some of these games go 60, 80 hours. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. You used to play a game, you, you take maybe 10 hours to beat it, but now it's it, it, you're immersed in the worlds now. And um, all over the place, there's occult themes. Look at this. this uh, I didn't notice it before. I'm just noticing it now, it, how this dress is so, somewhat formed like a pentagram. Right. See that? Um, I, I don't know if I'm stretching that, but that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. So Destiny is a very popular game right now. Very popular. And it's also made by uh, Activision who makes Call of Duty, which is another very popular game. So, um, yeah. What's next? <laughs> okay, do you want to move now off the Beatles? You can go yeah. on to... You want to see the picture of the doors holding a bust of Aleister Crowley? We can do that. Uh, That's kind of the, the... Or we can talk about Zeppelin. Yeah, sure. Um, but here's... Let me see if I can share my screen. Are you going to show that on me? You can do it. You can just look up Jim Morrison bust of Aleister Crowley. But you can see that, like he saw, like Jim Morrison saw Satan in Venice. Like, there's all kinds of creepy stuff. He was drink. Morrison was a blood drinker. They don't really talk about that. So that picture right there, second row, far left. That's it. Yeah. So that's a bust of Aleister Crowley, and he kind of has like a triangle hand gesture. Like these yeah. guys like to do their own gestures and stuff. Like Crowley himself did all these gestures too. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that uh, Morrison and their music is kind of pretty dark. Um, yeah, and a lot of dark lyrics, things like that. Peace Frog talks about blood drinking, blood rituals, believe it or not. If that's their song, Peace Frog. Um, so I included kind of those things, but you know, they thought that they, <laughs> they well, thought that they were gods, they were kind of had Eastern religion, they're influenced by occultism in yeah. part and even the name the doors i mean the doors are spiritual realms right it comes straight out of alistair husk uh aldous huxley right doors of perception yeah. that's yeah. the direct lift from that that thing so doors of perception is based upon psychedelics and then why are people using heavy duty psychedelics so that that current or intellectual and genealogy is is right there of the 20th century from crowley to huxley to the jim morrison yeah, uh, um, what's his name? Stan Lee, that created Marvel. Um, he was, I think he was, he was mentioned in the Doors of Perception. Um, oh, really? They, I think they, they took some sort of trip together, those two guys. And um, Stan Lee got some of his ideas from that trip. Uh, I, I could bring it up now, but then I have to go look for my PDF. And <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> but I want to show people the, um, the artwork. Okay. But yeah, that's uh, that's just another. I mean, Crowley is all over the 20th century of all these yeah. people who are reading him, Leary, Doors. I mean, we can do a whole. You could do a whole show on Zeppelin, Jimmy Page. Yeah. All right. So all right. So that's the Doors. Uh, we, we I saw an interesting figure that we hardly get to talk about when I'm with you. Um, let me see here. His name and he, and he just died. Too, I think last year or the year before. This guy. David Bowie, yes. 
Yes, dressed in Crowley's uniform of imagery, looking the exact same way Crowley was. Argued to be a great ceremonial magician. Some people have said that guy really was the ceremonial magician, and that was his religion. And he went, uh, Bowie went through, I mean, his last, it was called Black Star, was his last video. I did an analysis of that, and he has that smiley face right on the lapel, just like all these other occult characters. He had it right in the same spot as Moore put it on the comedian. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he definitely went through a Crowley phase. I don't know how much stuff, but he seemed to know, he seemed to really deeply reference a Crowley ritual that I can't remember now in Black Star. So that yeah. was kind of like his sending off point for his life as he was getting sicker and sicker. But, yeah. uh, I mean, you can just go through, I mean, I think it was, uh, he said, my whole, my whole interest was in Kabbalah and Crowleyism, the whole dark and rather fearsome never world of the wrong side of the brain. Yeah. So he talks about that. And, uh, you know, I think that he, He's saying, I'm closer to the Golden Dawn, which was Crowley's magical fraternity before he started his own. Closer right. to the Golden Dawn, immersed in Crowley's uniform of energy. Yeah. yeah. I, I, why do all these, or not all, but a lot of them go back to aliens? I mean, I know the answer, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> well, it's a great point because people think that this is kind of novel, but I think that Bowie had like three or four songs about aliens. Like one was literally called Loving the Alien or mm -hmm. something like that. He also did another one that was referenced um, Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood End, Childhood's End, which was yes. oh very influenced. I can't remember that song offhand, but uh, it was called Oh, You Pretty Thing. Have you ever seen Oh, You Pretty Thing or listened to the oh. lyrics of Oh, You Pretty Thing? No, I haven't. They're very interesting, but they reference Arthur C. Clarke. That was the inspiration. And then you have uh, Starman. So you've got all these. De he was definitely, and he, I think that he himself saw himself as kind of Major Tom, this person who floats out into the universe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that, that that person was kind of a figurative representation of him, mm -hmm. which is why that Major Tom figure in the beginning of Black Star had that smiley face. So it gets yeah. pretty dark. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can find the lyrics to. Yeah. Oh, you pretty things. How serious these guys take this stuff, though, with, with their astral projection and whatnot, and then them talking to these um, demonic beings, influencing them to make songs or whatnot. It, it just gets uh, pretty peculiar. Uh, let me see here. Uh, so, so, if I can, if I can share you the lyrics to Oh, you pretty things, he says, Let me make it plain, gotta make way for the homo superior, which is a direct reference to Arthur C. Clarke. Transhumanism and whatnot. Yeah, look at look at your children. See their faces in golden rays. Don't kid yourself. They belong to you. They're the start of the coming race. Race. The Earth is a B I T C H. Mm -hmm. We finished our news. Homeo sapiens have outgrown their use. All the strangers came today, and it looks as though they're here to stay. So the aliens arrive. Uh yeah. Always about the aliens or the or human two point Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it, like a that was a kind of a uh, thing about Nietzsche and the Nazis too. Was like the Overman, right. the Uberman, Uberman which yeah. is it's almost like the invitation to uh, like the original temptation, like ye shall be as gods. So it's yeah. like that that uh, these guys are reflecting that or uh, integrating that in their music and ideas. Yeah, yeah. and I don't want to go to this person yet, but as you see, Lady Gaga is imitating David Bowie's lightning. Right. Right. And the lightning represents Luc Lucifer, guys. They they know uh, they pretty much they imitate what Jesus said. Uh, they saw Lucifer fall from the sky like lightning or fall to the earth like lightning. And uh, so they put the lightning bolt um, in their artwork or on their face, tattoos or whatnot. Uh, that that's also goes back to the SS of the Hitler right. regime. Right. So it has a bunch of spiritual connotations. So we're not going to get into all that now. All of these artists actually deserve their own show, but it'll take a few years to do that. <laughs> and so David Bowie is like a show in himself. There's so much. And I think he was a very well-read guy. So mm -hmm. he kind of was able to integrate all those ideas into him. But do you yeah. ever hear the story where he tried to exercise his pool? There was a demon at the bottom of his pool in Los Angeles, and he brought in a witch to exercise the pool. 
Oh, no, I didn't hear that story. Oh, yeah. So it's just a crazy story. Like he said, he was demon possessed. He actually left LA after that. But she, his wife said, he said, his wife said, the pool was definitely, absolutely, no doubt about it, bubbling with an energy for which there was no possible ex explanation. Yeah. This wow. is after. So these guys, I think that these guys would not do magic if they didn't have some kind of either perceived or real dark spiritual events because these guys rep repeat them, you know, like Jim Morrison saw Satan in Venice. So, the, you know, I think that, uh, yeah. yeah, it's not a joke. Yeah, absolutely. What well, whose house was it that burnt down in um, California, and they rebuilt it and then burnt down again? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Mm, I don't remember that. What well, sounds Brett, familiar? I don't remember. Hey, Brett Ward. I know that you gotta know this. Can you tell us who that whose house that is? I can't remember. Uh, Brett Ward. He's in a Facebook chat. Yeah, Facebook all, chat. I can't remember at all, man. It's somebody's house. It was a, a cult house. Oh my goodness. It sounds super familiar. Yeah. So as as somebody can answer that, please answer that and we'll talk about it. Uh who is next? Who's on our, our list? Well, we can do there's a lot to do. We can do Hollow Notes. You can do Jimmy let's Page. Go, let's go Rolling Stones. Okay, let's do the Rolling Stones. And then and wait, let me give you an order. Rolling Stones, then Jimi Hendrix. Okay, well, you'll have to teach me about Hendrix because I don't know most of, a lot of his occult stuff. Oh, I have some quotes on my laptop. <laughs> I've okay. got to find it. Uh, let's go rolling. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I know the Rolling Stones, right? So they had um, his Satanic Majesty's Request was one of their albums, directly mm -hmm. thing. Like I told you before, they were in the show. Mick Jagger was in the movie Performance that was directed by Donald Camel, who was literally sitting on Crowley's um Crowley's knee. And there's mm -hmm. actually kind of a semi-famous picture of Donald Donald Campbell with Kenneth Anger, Alejandro Yunagorski, and Dennis Hopper. So you see this like cultural cross-fertilization, dark cultural cross-fertilization. Yeah. But uh yeah, the stones are, are mixed up with all kinds of crazy stuff. I think that Keith Richards' girlfriend was a witch too and did all kinds of witchcraft stuff. Um her name I can't remember right now. Interesting. There's Pallenberger, a, Pallenberg, I think. Anita Pallenberg was her name. Pallenburton? It's P A L L E N B E R G. Anita Pallenberg. Pallenberg. She was in the, the movie uh, performance, which was considered to be uh, one of the top 100 British films of all time. It's very strange, but they reference uh, the assassins. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, what I'm noticing as well, not everybody, but um, a lot of these artists that have a handle or it's either the husband or the wife or both of them connect as witches. You know, it's, it's a, a pattern. <laughs> no, it is. No, for real. Yeah. Because the same thing with Lennon and Ono was a witch, Anita Pallenberg and Richards. So a lot of these guys have like occult families or whatever relationships. Yeah. Really true. Yeah, this song here, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, I had to look it up because I couldn't remember. Um, it has been played in so many scenes and movies and video games, ushering in some sort of either satanic theme or a satanic figure because the song is about the devil. It's the devil singing to people, you know, still figurative, figuratively, of course, because it's a human singing, but you know what I mean. Right. No, it's, it's like from the devil's perspective, right? Right. I was there when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain. So yeah. he's saying that Satan was there. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Hope you remember my name. My name, yeah. And he said, I think that the song also says that he goes by a lot of names. Uh, so definitely, there's no question that this song is satanic, okay? And uh, the sympathy for the devil motif is ushered into a lot of movies. I'm not talking about the music now. I'm talking about the phrase, the... Um, the, the posture of this being like Hellboy, as we discussed in our program the other day, you they want you to have sympathy for this demonic being that came out of hell, right? And he is the Antichrist, uh, at least in that storyline, right? And so the sympathy for the devil thing is, it's it's even the, movie, the, the, the TV show Lucifer, I haven't watched it, but I've heard about it. 
And it's the same thing. They want you to kind of be on Lucifer's side some way, you know? Right. Uh, Lucifer's the kid guy, right? They twist yeah. it. Right. Oh, he gave up his little little gig in hell and he's helping people out, yet he's cursing people. But don't worry about it. It's Lucifer. Right. We well, isn't that going all the way back to, like, the idea of Prometheus and this uh, going way, uh, what is her name, Blavatsky and everything, is that the devil's the one who gives you culture and music and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, so... I think that this is kind of the same thing. Sympathy is like trying to, uh, yeah, normalize uh, the devil's okay instead of a damned person who's, you know, cause seeks to destroy, right? Right. Uh, they act like he wasn't a murderer from the beginning. Right, <laughs> you know? right. So, um, I, I'm just tired of seeing all this, but this is this showing us the culture of our time. You know, like you said back then in the 60s and 70s, this stuff, if they mentioned stuff, it, it would be all over the news. Look what they said. Oh, they're blaspheming God. Nowadays, cricket. No, this is normal. I think they're on their fourth season of Lucifer or something like that. So it is definitely being watched. Yeah. I haven't I haven't had the metal to actually sit down and go through it. But uh, yeah, I, I just skipped it, man. I, I just yeah. I'm just tired of all this. Um, all the satanic stuff being thrown in, in front of our faces. So yeah. once I heard of this, the moment I heard of this, and there was outcry, and still it went forward. Net, uh, it was dropped from the original station, and then Netflix picked it up. And here we have it. I'm not sure if it's going to continue to a fifth or sixth season. I don't even know what season it's in. But um, I thought you know, it was four. I it's four. I don't know. I'll double check. I thought it was. So I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot of seasons. I think it's on season six. Wow, you're right. Yeah, see, season six. So you know, this stems from the influence from the sixties and seventies. Yes, uh, the Lucifer has been around for a long time, but our ent entertainment industry hasn't. I, has it even been around for a hundred years? As far as television and movie, that's a good question. I mean, when did it start? Right at the beginning of the twentieth century, right? With that yeah, technology, I think, was, I think it was like nineteen twenty or something like that. Anyway, right. You know, it's it, let's just say it's been around for a hundred years. That's nothing. That's nothing. a group in time. So uh, the entire world is engulfed in all this stuff, but a lot of it is also coming from America, and um, we've allowed Hollywood to grow in such a fervor over the last fifty years, and um, there's not too much outcry anymore. We we let everything go, and I think you're right. We can blame Alice Bailey. We can blame Theosophy, New Age, Buddhism, Hinduism. We can blame all these things, but it's just evil from the wicked side. This, this, uh, this name right here the, in the Kabbalah, he's pretty much the good guy, and God is the bad guy. And same thing in Gnosticism. So if you if you learn about these things, you'll understand why we were saying what we're saying. It's it's really sinister. So who's next? Uh, Jimi Hendrix? You know, I didn't go look up my notes on. Jimmy. You would have to tell me because I don't know. I I've looked through Jimi Hendrix. I mean, he is like, yeah. The great, it's almost like his story was the guy who sold his soul to be the greatest violinist. Like because for me, Hendrix was just on a class of his own. But mm -hmm. I never knew. I don't know his kind of. Uh, Occult pedigree or things like that. I really don't. I don't know that much about him, sadly. I mean, I've, I've listened to his a voodoo child, and there's definitely some elements of occultism, but yeah, I don't know. It, he, you know, he was an excellent lyricist. All those lyrics and all those songs were his. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty. He's very talented. I mean, I don't yeah, know how much of the demonic was into his talent because sometimes, for people that don't know, sometimes the spirits will come and they'll endow you with with you know uh, talent to get you to, to be that figure of praise so they can get the praise through that through that man or woman. I don't know if he was naturally talented. I didn't study his whole, his history, just like um, Prince, you know? Uh, Prince seemed to be naturally talented, but how much of that was natural talent? We don't know. Uh, what, there's one story going around. I haven't found the proof yet, but I'll mention it anyway. Somebody told me to look at Michael Jackson's um, documentary after he passed, um, but supposedly, Michael Jackson and Prince were contacted in the same spirit, and the spirit would tell 
tell one of them that if you don't do this, I won't give you this song. I'll give it to Michael Jackson or, or vice wow, versa. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So that's something well, we I'll can we can talk about Michael Jackson because there's all kinds. Have you ever seen the picture of him wearing the seven 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 jacket down yeah. the side? Yeah. There, well, also a lot of obelisks because at the very end of uh, not beat it. It was uh, what's the one where he's dancing in the. Thriller. I think it's the end of Thriller. There's like he's in front of an obelisk staring at the screen. So there's all kinds of occultism. Yeah, he did have a lot of occult images that most people, it just went over their head. Right. Uh, he even had, you know, the Masonic steps. Those yeah. were in one of his videos. Yeah. Um, you know, and people out there that don't know this stuff don't say, oh, you're just, eh. no, I'm not talking about just regular steps. It was obvious. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. <laughs> it was obvious. And he, you could actually kind of make an argument that he was into full body modification, right? I mean, yeah. he just he just got into all that stuff. He doesn't. I mean, at the end of his life, he just doesn't look like when he was younger at all. And I, so, you heard the story where his dad shot him up with drugs to make his body stop producing testosterone. Oh no, I've never heard that one. Yeah, no, I think that actually the judge talked about it in one of the cases involving Michael Jack. Yeah, you see the seven 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 jacket. Right. That goes back to Crowley's. Um, he had a uh, Lieber seven seven seven, which was kind of a graph of all world religions and their similarities. Yeah. So different, same being, different name, going through Egyptian culture, Greek culture. But uh, I think in the court case, I'd have to look that up. I think you can actually type it into Google and said the dad gave him drugs to make sure his testosterone. He was the youngest one of the kids, and he the father didn't want to. Slay the Golden Goose, so to speak. So they made him into a Peter Pan character. And sure enough, you know, Peter Pan is, and he had the kind of Peter Pan place yeah. in, in Neverland and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he saw himself as a Peter Pan character. Yeah, I, I could see that. I could see that. No, no question. Oh, you, you also had the video. I don't remember the name of the video, but um, is when the one where he turned into a werewolf, and it's not thriller. Was it him turning into a were werewolf? I don't remember. I, think so. I don't recollect. I don't remember. I remember we talked about um, with the Wiz last time. So there's yeah. another occult element of him being in the Wiz. Uh, it was some bit. It wasn't. It was, it, I guess he did do this in, in Thriller. My bad. But there's another one. There's another video. I don't, I don't recollect. remember it right now. I don't remember it right now. Anyway. <laughs> I guess I'll bring that up another time, but but I mean, if Thriller was uh, obviously occultic, you know, and right. he even had to do a disclaimer, um, where he would say, "Oh, this this video doesn't do have anything to do with the occult or whatnot," because they know. Come on, man, yeah. this thing is so occultic is 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 no it's no joke. And we used to watch this as and you know as a, as a child. I mean, we were into you know some of the scary stuff, so we didn't care. You know, but as you grow older, oh, man, I love Thriller. I listen yeah. to Thriller all the time. It was a, it yeah. was an incredible album. I mean, incredibly yeah. influential album. Do you mind sharing my screen? Because I'll show you the picture at the end of Thriller where he's in front of. Uh, see the obelisk there, prominently oh, yeah. displayed. Uh, there, so. Look at that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't catch that one. And for people that don't know, the obelisk is bale shaft. Right. Okay. It's a phallic symbol. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. But it's part of their religion. Like you got to find the obelisk, and you know it's all about. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let me see if anybody answered the question here. Whose house got burnt down in California? It, I should know right away, but I just can't remember, man. I don't. I don't see anybody answering the question. Oh wait a minute! There's somebody says formerly Alistair Crowley's house. Well, that's bullet skin burned down, I think, a couple years ago, and they're trying to rebuild it right now. That's Crowley's kind of okay. All right. we're home right. up in far north Scotland. All right. Wait a minute. This is where? So when Crowley did one of his first big rituals, it was called the Abramelin working. It's mm. based upon an old kind of text that was found. So he bought in about right, right at the turn of the century, 1900, he bought a place on um, – Loch Ness, right, with the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. About a place that literally overlooks the whole lake. It's kind of up on a hill overlooking the lake called Bulliskin, B O L E S K I N E. Jimmy uh, Page bought it, but uh, the recently burnt down. But that was yeah, 
but I don't know if that's what you were referencing. Okay, maybe I'm because I'm because Swartz it was in California, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so this is Jimmy Page in front of Bulletskin Manor, that's, which just that's it. so this is not in California. This is in this where? is in North Scotland. So very kind of if you looked at the map and saw Edinburgh and Glasgow, it would be even farther north than that. Okay. So the yeah. the lake is Loch Ness, which is uh, Loch means lake in whatever Scottish or Gaelic, and it's a very long, deep lake. But yeah. he seemed Crowley seemed to think that that was an ideal, and he said he was haunted. Like the rituals haunted that place, and it had that place had like a real, you know, crew, people would see ghosts and stuff like that. People went insane there, so it had <laughs> kind of a creepy ghost <laughs> element to it. You know? I bet, man. It, this stuff is so dark, but you know, the public, they see the glitz and the glamour and the fame. Sometimes it's pretty much out there in your face, but most people don't care. Um, and other times, you know, they doll it up or whatnot. So just one more thing on Bolson. It's interesting because one of Crowley's, I think he's a member of the OTO. Yes. Crowley's AA is the person who is soliciting funds right now to raise money to restore the manor to its original pre-burnt down uh, size and you know it actually if you look at it it's not a huge it's not really a huge uh, building but I think that it in a cult lore it has so much importance to a lot of these Satanists that and what, you know what I also um, find important to mention here is uh, they love to go out into the wilderness into the trees because they say that you know that's where the, you you have a big, greater connection with God or whatnot but they're not trying to connect with the God of the Bible they're trying no. to connect these, these demonic beings, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. that's what the that's what the ritual was there for. That's what Crowley was doing. He never really finished the thing. It, he was supposed to take six months. Like it's supposed to be really grueling. The um, Abermelon ritual involves all talismans and all this other stuff that supposed to lead. You know, it actually was supposed. His the goal was to have these demons from the Goetia, right? Solomon's uh -huh. Goetia, son of David. Mm -hmm. You be they become your servitor. So the goal is to have the demons become your servants. Uh yeah, I see that. Yeah, and but but you end up being their serv servants. Well, right. <laughs> I mean that's kind of the thing. Let's see. Right? Abra. Let me see about Mel. Mel. You can actually read, I mean, if you're bored, you can read this sacred magic of Elma. This is it. So this is the manuscript. Let me see if I can find a thing of this. Magic of Ibermilk. Yeah. Let's see. This is a better. So there's all kinds of elements. This is it. This is the, so S.L. McGregor Mathers was actually Crowley's teacher in the Golden Dawn. And Crowley, all those, like the imagery of Crowley, he lifted yeah. it. It didn't come out of nowhere. He kind of, that style of living and using costumes and stuff came from McGregor Mathers. And the idea of, you know, translating works or mystical occult works also kind of came from Mathers. Then eventually he just kind of broke from Mathers. There's actually a court case between Crowley and Mathers because Mathers thought that Crowley took, quote, sacred, unquote, material from the Golden Dawn and published, published it and after taking uh, an oath not to reveal what was yeah. there. And... Uh, there actually is, it's in the kind of British archives of history of them kind of disputing. And Mac McGregor Mather showed up at the courtroom in full magical regalia. So yeah. these guys, you know, they took themselves pretty seriously. I think that Mather's actually lost to that case, but um, it's just an interesting piece of this kind of occult history, also, just not being knowledgeable about uh, some of these earlier documents. So Crowley would go and you know, take uh, take Mather's stuff and, and incorporate it. That's really what he was. He was actually incorporating a lot of earlier materials into his future religion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had an artist you wanted to bring up earlier. And I, I can't remember. It, it was past this Jimmy Page stuff, Michael Jackson. This so is much. a more current artist. His name is Absol. And his, here is his disc discography. He's yeah. actually from uh, Southern California. Yeah. And... Um, is a Crowley 
aficionado or advocate. You can see this tattoo on his back says, do what thou wilt. Yeah. It has 11,913 likes. He's got this, I forgot what this symbol is called, but that's on his chest. So he's got these occult tattoos and kind of your standard stuff. But I mean, for occultists. But his one of his albums in 2016 was Do What Thou Wilt. Yeah. Pro, yeah. So this this theme has been going on a while um, in in what you would call hip hop. But people that don't know, hip hop is not the music. Hip hop is the culture. The music is rap. Rap comes out of the culture of hip hop. So don't mix the two together. They're not one the same. Okay. So it, as far as hip hop goes, well, this do what thou wilt maxim has been coming out more and more over the last twenty years. But it, hip hop is not new. I mean, sorry, Satanism is not new to hip hop. It's just now it, it's more blatantly shown. And I have a couple artists I can show you after you finish with this guy here. Well, if you if people are bored or want to look in this guy, I mean, I think his real inspiration is Crowley, and he's talking about Alistair Crowley right here. This is from uh, New Hip Hop, hot new hip hop. So he's had a hundred thousand views. So he kind of explains never, his his ideas. Yeah, I never heard of him, but I guess people uh, people. I yeah. thought that he was somewhat somewhat successful. But maybe I was wrong. I, I thought he was better known maybe than he is. Yeah, I, th I think some other guys are taking his place. Uh, we'll get into those in a minute. Let me uh, okay. share this really quick. Uh, where are we? I have to stream. This this guy, we'll just get it, get him out of right, the way. There you go. <laughs> because we have to do what thou wilt here. Him and his wife, Beyonce, are straight up Satanists. Um, people want to say that they are inside of the Illuminati. They're not. They're just puppets. Uh they uh, they have masters, of course, and you know they're just putting out there whatever spiritual belief they have. In fact, uh, Rockaware, the uh, his clothing company, I'm not even sure if he still owns that company. But one time, I I was in the house for a while, and I came out. And when I say a while, I mean I I, I wasn't going out a lot, okay. <laughs> and when I came out and went to the clothing store, all I saw was these uh, Jay Z shirts with all sorts of Masonic stuff all over it. I'm like, what is going on? And it's being, I mean, it wasn't being hidden. It wasn't in the back of the floor where the, near the clearance rack. This was out in front view. And I said, wow, what is going on? I, hear, I think this is a reference here to some of that stuff. Yeah, here it is. Uh, I, I, in fact, it was called Masters of the Craft. That was the, uh, the, the line there. And it would have all this Baphomet and Jacob, J oh, jo J Boaz, or whatnot, uh, right. symbolism, and I was blown away. That's when I knew that Satanism, Satanism was on a large have, ride inside of um, inside of the hip hop culture. Have you ever heard of him talking about Rain Man? Yes. Yeah. So Rain yes. Man is supposedly Satan, right? Right. So and Satan makes it rain. There are three people that I know that talk about Rain Man. That's Jay Z, um, Eminem, and also Lil Wayne. Oh, interesting. Um, and this was like the early two thousands. I'm not sure if they still reference that. I don't listen to their music anymore. But uh, yeah, see you see the you see the t-shirts here. Yeah, that, this is but what. If I, that's the layman. If that's if that's his t-shirt, that's straight out of Crowley. That yeah. layman, that black layman with the seeing eye and the dove and the chalice, yeah. that's right from Curly. All right. And uh, we can get into his wife, but I'm not prepared for that tonight. <laughs> um, you know, this, this, this stuff is so suspect and people just, people are, some people are starting to wake up to it. Some people. Uh, but um, for the most part, most are asleep. Have you ever heard of Jay Z being part of Boule or kind of Black Masonry, African American Masonry? That, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think type in and say Jay Z Masonry audience. I think he was there was a picture of him in a Masonry meeting. See right there the the guys with the white um, gloves. Fourth, right here. Yeah, I think that he's in there. I could have swore when he was younger. Yeah, spotted at Freemason meeting in New Jersey. I'm pretty sure that's him. I'm, I'm, Maybe it's not. Oh, right there. He's right there. 
Yeah. Right is that is that right? Is that right him? Here. Right here. Yeah. So, unless that somebody looks very close to him. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's not him. But he's from New York, right? Wasn't he yeah, out yeah. of the projects yeah. of New York? Or something? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a Mason, though. Let's call right. Him. So M Boule is kind of like it's supposedly kind of higher end masonry, kind of like yeah. skull and bones, right? Yeah. It's a subset it's of masonry. Yeah, it, 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 mas that form of mas masonry is they're the gatekeepers. They keep um, people down in their education and whatnot, but they, they elevate themselves with the education, but they're the gatekeepers. You, you don't True. go outside of what they practice, you know, and they'll stand up there as leaders of the community, but they're actually not letting the community rise up, okay? Um, as far as education and prosperity and whatnot. So that isn't that, it's just, that's the same with all masons, right? It's kind of yeah. like- our people will get advancement, education, access to the best um, deals, monetary deals, banking deals, things like that. Yeah. And also, this is important to bring up. I'm going to do a show about this, I think, next week. 5% uh, Nation. I'm not going to go too deep into it right now. But this is a, a JV where the 5% chain, they are... What they are is the offshoot of Islam. Some of them are going to say they're not Muslims or whatnot, but it's the offshoot of Islam. Uh, Clarence X and Malcolm X used to run together, and they broke off, and Clarence made the 5% nation. And for them, Allah, me, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, means you are God. You are Allah. Sounds familiar? Wow. Right. Same yeah. Thing, right? Wow. Yeah, so he says he's God. He believes that. Uh, right, it's it, the ultimate satanic principle. Man is God. Crowley wrote about it. Libra seventy-seven. Right, mm -hmm. and there's no other God but man. Yeah. Satanic so, uh, and he calls himself Jehovah. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a big thing back in um, what what was that? Early two thousands. Yeah, Jehovah the God, right? Right. Oh. Isn't there like Charlemagne the God? Do you think that he's involved in that stuff too? Oh, definitely. Anytime oh, okay. you're talking about, I'm, uh, they say the name and they got God behind it. They're definitely a part of that. They're part There's of that. No, wow. question. no question. He's had a, that guy has an interesting background too. That Jehovah the or Charlemagne the God. Oh, uh, so interesting. He's right. a very prominent cultural figure. That guy Charlemagne yes. the God. Yes, he is, and a lot of them are Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's just a little tie there for you. Uh team here. Do you wanna do you wanna move on from him? Because I, I would like to uh propose another artist. Kim All Kardashian's right. husband. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Type um, in Kim Kardashian and that witch that was just on there. Um what's her name? Vukovic. Oh, oh Abrak uh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Kardashian and her last name. I don't want to embarrass myself. I'm taking this off first. I don't want to spill her name. <laughs> uh, the, uh, who's that name? Now? Uh, Kardashian? Kardashian, yeah. And Abramovich? Yeah. They're, they're definitely like they were. I mean, clearly. Uh, Kim Kardashian. They used to have a picture of them together. Oh, there you go. Kim Kardashian and Abramovich. Kanye's under... This is an old arm... Uh, wow, this is crazy. Look at this one. Let me share this for you. Let's see. Oh, all right. You so see my, that? Yeah, there yeah. you go. Kim before Kardashian you, is now the spitting image of Marina Abramovich. Hold on. Before you go, somebody answered the question. So, uh, uh, Jack Parsons' home burned in California. I think Brett Ward might have, might have answered it earlier, but I can't get back there. So Debbie Chapman answered uh, Jack Parsons' home burned in California. Brambridge, yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. So, But uh, this is interesting because before Kanye had his kind of return to the Lord Jesus, which I think is authentic, he got in very dark with her and some other characters. Yeah, um, he, was, he was surrounded Surrounded like, by occultists. I'm going to bring up a picture in a minute um, of Kanye, past Kanye, <laughs> okay? And it's it's one of the most disturbing pieces of art that I've ever seen from him. He's had disturbing ones before, but this this one for me was just, I was like, what is going on with you, buddy? Um, let's see. You can go ahead and talk while I look this up. 
Okay, so Kanye, if you look up, let me see if I can share this. Kanye West was, if you can look up Alejandro, I mean, it's a tough name. I'll pull it. Yeah. It's Kanye West and uh, Alejandro Yodorostri. Yodorostri. I would have felt like like Yod, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So this is them together. If you can pull my screen up. Let's yeah. see. Can I sh can you share my screen? There you go. So here's Kanye probably four years ago, five years ago, with Alejandro Yudorowski, who was an occultist and likes Crowley and an admitted literal admitted blood drinker, human blood drinker. Oh. And you'll read about that in Children of the Beast. He literally admits to drinking human blood. It made his skin feel good. Yeah. So this so is yeah, people think that this stuff isn't isn't certified like this is actual evidence fake true evidence from this guy's own mouth from yodorowsky's own mouth yeah he wrote about drinking blood so you have kanye west with him and then if i go to the upper part right of the screen here's yodorowsky with kenneth anger this guy donald kamel who i mentioned earlier who was friends with the rolling stones one of his best friends was mick jagger and marlon brando actually donald camel and dennis hopper who was i mean it's incredible Dennis Hopper's in all kinds of occult influence films and stuff like that. I didn't, uh, I Twin, didn't Twin Peaks and Blue Velvet. Dennis Pardon Hopper? What? I didn't realize that. Dennis Hopper. Yeah. So Hopper was in a movie called Night Tide with Jack Parsons' wife. Uh huh. So he goes, and they were, and you get to 777. There's actually a, a picture of Hopper with <laughs> Marjorie Cameron. Let me see how I can find it. Uh, let's see. Hopper. And Marjorie. Sorry about that, guys. My dog. Oh my goodness. He's so here, let's see if I can find the picture. <laughs> is not pop, popping up, but this is the movie that if you see Dennis Hopper Night Tide there. So this is the movie he was in, and this is literally Jack Parsons' wife right here is in the same movie. Oh, okay. But uh, there used to be a picture online of Curtis Harrington. It was friends with, um, here it is, let's see. So this is Marjorie Cameron. That's her. There used to be a picture of all of these three together, but it's no longer on Google. Anyway, so Hopper's, yeah. Hopper has an interesting pedigree, but let's go back to Kanye because he didn't even, wasn't even friends with Alejandro Yudorowsky. He absorbed Yudorowsky's imagery. So this uh, imagery is from Kanye West, and he's just taking it right out of, I oh, think it's Holy Mountain. Interesting. So you got the pyramid, the yeah. moon. Yeah. Um, and you can just see this is right out of out of uh, Kanye's tour, right? See, look at yeah. that. Straight out of Kanye's tour. Right. All of Yodorowsky and maybe some of his clothes. I'm not sure. Yeah. And he also did one when he started his Sunday services where it, it, it was pretty much an all C and I. Oh really? Uh, Do you? Uh -huh. What what's your impression of his Christian transformation? Is it legit? I, I I listen to the album and everything sounds legit. I don't agree with necessarily everything in there, but it sounds legit. Um, I tell you what, if he's not legit, he's doing a better he's doing a better job than a lot of these Christian rappers out there. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. So um, I think time will tell. Uh, did you ever see his Apple, uh, his Apple podcast interview? No, I don't really know. I've not listened to his music and don't know much more about him other than what I've shown you. Yeah. Well, I, I would, I would suggest listening to that Apple podcast interview. It's very enlightening. Was um, it the interview he did with Rogan? Not, not, not Joe Rogan. It was some a guy I never heard of, but it's on Apple podcast and you can okay. find it on YouTube. It's a video. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, so I want to show you this picture. Right here, let me see where is it. Uh, caught this around 2016, I believe. There's a picture. You see it? Didn't... Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah. So you it's have pretty these dark. Little... Yeah. yeah all, these ladies are pretty much uh, little demons with their little snake tongues or whatever. And he's uh, isn't that Liv Tyler? I don't know. Is it? It looks like her. I can't tell. But then... I think this guy right here was Kanye's boyfriend at one time, this dude. Forgot his name. He was an Italian kind of designer. Yeah. 
I think that there was some kind of weird relationship between Kardashian, Kanye West, and this guy whose name I can't Uh, remember. You see the red hand? You see the red hand? Yeah, interesting. This guy, this is uh, this is like the original photo right here. So then, you know, so so the guys, the guy's name is Ricardo TC. If you look up T I S C I, the guy is just heavily involved in the occult. He does all of these kind of things like Abramovich. Like there's all kinds of ritual stuff. That's T I S E I. If you look up T I S E I, right here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So if you that's him. So if you type in T C and Kanye West, there's like pictures of them together. But I think that they were involved in really dark stuff. This guy Ricardo T C, but he's around with all these other celebs and yeah. Abramovich and stuff. Yeah, we won't we won't know the true story, man, unless he tells it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just look at all these people. But he I mean, Kanye West had some kind of psychological break, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you oh yeah, so you show it. So those are them together. So that's T C and them. But let me show you this. Let's see if I can find the Abramovich pick. So there's T C with Marina Abramovich. Mm-hmm. So he's hanging he's in that same circle. His wife, T.C. Abramovich. And, and here's T.C. here. This is his pictures, man. It's a bunch of blood, Rottweilers. Uh, no, it gets darker. There's there's really dark pictures of this guy. Yeah. Satanic ritual. So this is Ricardo T.C. of Jay-Z. Oh, that's where it, that's where the image came from with the with the yeah. Uh, this is a picture of Jay Z by the same dude who's hanging out with Kanye West, right? Yeah. Uh huh. TC, and so we've already gone through Jay Z, but look at this weird imagery, like black faces. Yeah. But there's another picture that I don't see um, on here, but it's like literally satanic ritual, like they're in a place with candles on a board with uh-huh. a victim. It's off the charts. Wow. It's, it's, not, getting more, it's, not it's getting more, up. more and more blatant, right? Yeah. As we accept this uh, Satanism in our culture, it's being accepted left and right. And one of the, the obvious reasons is because we're soaking up so much of the Satanic imagery and entertainment. And I keep saying it, you look at these streaming services and I guarantee you on the first page, you're going to find minimum five to 10 occult movies or TV shows, minimum. <laughs> right? It's really true. No question. Yeah. And what, what, okay, well, here's one. This is the guy. This is one, but there's a lot more pictures of this guy with all kinds of occult stuff. So there's him with a Rottweiler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This sick stuff, man. Yeah, no, it gets worse. These sick. guys are involved in. I remember you showed stuff. me some stuff when we first met, and I, oh my goodness, that stuff was just nasty, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it just goes on like weird clothing, costumes. Yeah. Is this the guy? Is this the guy? Because I know there's a fashion designer that um, pretty much he designs for a lot of people and he loves putting pentagrams near the women's chest. Like, and it was sewn within the clothing. Like, the one I don't talking. know. I don't know. This and, is him with. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is him with Madonna. Mm-hmm. So he's all over the place. He's like a Bramovich. He's all. Networked with these people, but there's a brutal pick of like a satanic ritual that he's done. Uh, so, but people- I don't know. I don't know if that's the one where he's putting the pentagram on that. There's that other guy. Uh, have you heard of McQueen? Mm, I mean, it's no. not really a musician, but he had all kinds of satanic imagery in his clothes. Alexander Mc- McQueen, maybe, supposedly. Maybe that too, because he's a designer for celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah, no, he was like one of the top designers for celebrities and supposedly killed himself. Super successful, wealthy, sells his clothes for like four or five figures. Yeah. Supposedly got depressed and went in, you know, one of those mysterious kind of Hollywood fame, suicide, so-called suicides. Um, somebody's asking you a question. Okay. Is, um, isn't Peter Lavenda tied to Hopper, et cetera? If he is, I'm not. I, I'm not sure of that. Tied to Hopper. Not sure. We're not. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. I've had like conversation. Well, I've exchanged emails with Lavenda, but 
Yeah, I mean, my, my story with Lavenda, I don't want to talk about that. Maybe uh, offline. That's a deep hole, isn't it? <laughs> it gets pretty deep. It's actually current. Like, that's the whole funny thing is people think the occult's in the past or something like that. But that guy was filmed at, Lavenda was filmed at a ritual. There's pictures of Peter, Peter Lavenda at a ritual. He wrote the Necronomicon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's bad. Yeah. He's, and he's the one, he's in that meeting in the desert or whatever, that UFO group. There he is prominently there, and he's put out all these books about occultism and uh, Necronomicon. Oh, here's here's the other, another uh, usual suspect. Here's TC with Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna oh, here, oh, here we go. Here he is with Abramovich, TC. Who else is on there? I don't know. Some of those other people. Isn't that the girl? Isn't that the artist? Uh, musician? I can't remember her name. I don't know. Some people, some of these people I'm not familiar with because I, I you know, I, I jumped out of the whole music scene after being a DJ and a magazine owner and all that stuff in 2006. Um, we had a website, uh, NFL was going to uh, sponsor us and Sony PlayStation was going to sponsor us. And we, I dropped it all in 2006 and never looked back, you know, so you were not, like a uh, refugee from all that stuff, all that darkness. Yeah, man. <laughs> Life was crazy back then. I bet. Uh, you're lucky so, to make it out, man. Some people don't. And the funny thing is, I was just at the border of the in, of the industry, just the border. Uh, we were we were just about to get signed, and people were willing to fly us out to California. All expenses paid. It was it was crazy. But <laughs> were, were, did they tell you to, uh, you know, come to the after party, so to speak? No, we didn't get that far That's because good. God stopped it. Okay. That's good. You're that, lucky. Fortunately. Yeah. Um, so this guy I want to bring up here. Well, this is just one more thing. This is kind of interesting because she, this model on the right, Campbell, ties into Epstein, right? Uh, so yeah. you've got Kardashian, and this is Johnny Depp's ex girlfriend in the in the turquoise. Is is? And then Naomi Campbell's all deep with Epstein, neck yeah. deep, and the cultists. Have you ever seen Naomi Campbell's uh mansion? No, it, go type in, watch this. Type in Naomi Campbell Mansion into Google. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, get ready. I'll, I'll let you share your screen. Uh, Naomi Campbell. I'm bringing up an, another rapper in a second. Okay. Uh, Camp. No. That's so fast sometimes. A bunch of misspelled words. Oh my goodness! No way! Way! Hold on a second. Uh, so the eye of that's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You can't make this stuff up, man. Can't make it up. <laughs> can't make it up. There. This is a different class, man. They're in a different, different world than. Than other people, I think they're definitely an elite class. It's a big freaking eye of horse. Yeah, sold out to Satan. Wow. What's this thing over here? Is this an onk? I don't. I don't. I, I, I don't know. Because uh, you know the fertility symbol or mm -hmm. ISIS, they can't they can't copulate because the the phallic symbol is missing. So hmm. I don't know. Very interesting. It looks like a. It looks. It is an onk. Look at that. Oh, well, right. So there you go. That's her probably her religion. Right wow. there. So we've we been about this for a couple of weeks now. The eye of Horus, Isis, uh Samaramus, Nimrod, Tammuz. Here it is, folks. Here it is. That's the that's the fertility symbol that looks like a cross. That circle is the JJ And um um oh, Horus cannot have he can't mate with her because the, the penis is missing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna move move to the rap for now. You got anything else to say about that? I don't know. I think I've done Kanye, Jay Z. I don't know. I don't... All right, this is this is one somebody. A lot of people don't suspect, but I, in his early days, it wasn't brought out into his music uh, that became popular. He's dead now. For those that don't know who this is, big pun. But when he was, uh, before he got signed, he was into a lot of devil music. Okay, even um, Fat Joe admits that on camera. So 
just I'm not going to spend too much time on him. He's, he's gone, and he he had uh I think he had two albums. So, uh, died died young. He he was overweight. So, but he was definitely into a lot of devil music. But here we go. Here goes. Uh, let's see here. Boom. Okay, let me go with this one first. This is some obscure group. I don't know who they are. They, I mean, I know who they are. Their name is Twin Temple. But it says, um, Satanism and doo-wop might not go together at a first glance or a second or third. In fact, the combination of Annie, Amy Winehouse style vocals with black lace and fake blood seems to match, seems a match made in hell. Well, hell, um, uh, whatever they're saying there. But seven piece, uh, but seven piece group Twin Temple make it work. They have been captivating a uh, captive. They've been captivating audiences with their devilish live shows, and will surely become a 2019 festival favorite. So I guess they're going to that. Uh, we're going to that festival, um, the big one. Can't remember the name. Was it Coachella or something like that? Anyway, right. just just to go back. Sorry, sorry, Chris, but just mm -hmm. to finish up with Naomi Campbell. One of the Epstein stories uh, by one of the victims is by Virginia Jufre Roberts or Roberts Jufre. And she said she went to Naomi Campbell's birthday party in France with Epstein and Maxwell. He was arrested in jail still, right? Where they're yeah. waking up every 15 minutes. And it's confirmed because those pictures are on uh, Mirror Co. UK website. So you can see pictures of Epstein, Campbell, uh, Max, uh, Maxwell and Jufre all together. It's crazy. Wow. Wow. And, and, it, and it, all, it always goes, gets deeper and deeper and deeper, especially with this whole S Epstein stuff. What's the lady that got arrested? Um, and she's in custody right now and she's fearing for her life. Uh, it's, it's, it's Ghislaine Maxwell. Jill, yeah. Ghislaine Maxwell. She's, they say she wakes up every 15 minutes to make sure she's alive. <laughs> or they wake her up, right? They just want to make sure she's breathing. Can you imagine if she died in custody? It would just be terrible. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the fact that Epstein died in custody was terrible. Yeah. But, yeah. Some oh, people say he didn't die. They took him out. Whatever the story is, he's not He's not giving a, a, a testimony. <laughs> so, right. Well, that's important. I mean, I think these guys have to die. They have to pay. Somebody has to pay the mob to get rid of them because they just had too much information on powerful people with tons of money. And that's the group that they're in by. So I don't think Epstein killed himself at all. Oh, Very no likely way. probability. You know? Yeah, don't no way. And the guy was tall, man. I mean, that anyway. <laughs> Did you see who they put him? Who was like a cellmate? The guy who like might be one of the people who did him did him in. He was just a giant. He was yeah. a huge roided up guy with big old muscles yeah. all over his neck and stuff. I can't remember his name. He, he was a monster, man. He had killed like he brought four guys into a bar, and did a did a treatment on them, and they didn't mm -hmm. come out alive, man. Yeah, and this so he was going. Sorry, he was going to jail for a long time. Yeah. All connected to the music industry, and and more, of course. Uh, so this this right here, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I, I just want to show you guys that um, it's nothing new to wow. uh, the the culture of hip hop. Okay. And most, uh, this guy right here is fairly new, fairly new here, this guy. And these, this is 3-6 Mafia right here, right. right? You see the upside down cross or whatnot. So pretty much one of the first ones to start uh, singing about Satan was Big L. I didn't care for his music, um, but, but I, I, I cared for it less when I started hearing about the devil stuff. So it says, on my skull, the 666, no tricks. Um, when I catch fits, my mom picks up the crucifix and I kill chumps for the cheapest price. I'm rolling like with Satan, not Jesus Christ. Enemies. I got several done. Big L straight from hell. The mother, mother, devil's son. Right. And also, I in my testimony, I mentioned grave diggers. Um, at the time, I was listening to a lot of Wu-Tang Clan. And Grave Diggers is out of the Wu Tang Wu Tang Clan, and, and it had uh, I think three or four members. Um, and so anyway, uh, listening to Jizza. Okay, let me just cut this out for a second. Uh, listening to Jizza at night, I would go to it with my uh, my tape player. This is 1994, and 
I would just listen to this stuff over and over and over and over and over and over again, go to sleep with it, get into my car, put the tape in, drive to work, come back. I'm listening to that, go to sleep again, rinse and repeat. Right. And it, at this period, I started to go back to church and all of a sudden I'm starting to get held down at night. But remember, I'm a 20 something year old guy. I don't know what's going on. Okay. And so it started to get so bad. It was um, pretty much from, from once every week to every other day, right? And I would ask church folks, what's going on? At the time, I came down with a terrible fever. And I would ask church folks, like, hey, what's going on? This is happening to me. And they, the only answer they gave me was I had, I was giving the devil too much glory. I'm like, I need help here. <laughs> I need answers, you know? So instead of going to humans, I went to God. And I, I gave a prayer and I did not expect an answer. Okay. I just went and prayed in faith. And one night I had a dream and the uh, a grave digger song started playing. It was a diary of a mad black man or something like that. And the beat started. And then the, all of a sudden the record started skipping and skipping and skipping. Then a voice, a voice said, it's the music that you're listening to why these things are happening. Wow. And so after that, I got a couple more demonic attacks, but the last one, it, I felt, I didn't see per se, I felt two on my arms, two on my legs, and in my mind's eye seeing, I saw a, um, a smoky figure come up behind my door and no eyes, no nothing, just smoke. And all I could do was yell out the name of Jesus, and they left. That was it. And from there, I started listening to more theater music. And I didn't drop secular music altogether then, but I stayed away from that, what I was listening to. Um, so, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> that's like a sleep paralysis story, too, where yeah, people, yeah. like, the only thing they can do is call out for the Lord, say Jesus. And then yeah, uh, if you look at the sleep paralysis stories, they're very similar because they feel like they can't move. Something's holding on to them or sitting on their chest. They say Jesus. Right. Exactly. And you hear a lot of this in the, in the ufology community, too. But I don't want to go off into that right now. Um, so yeah, well, thanks for sharing that story. That's a great story. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, all right. So you had Grave Diggers. And so you, then you have 3-6 Mafia, right? And they went deep. Uh, let's see here. We were, this is um, from Paul. He says, we were into horror movies and serial killers. I talk about this stuff all the time, why we need to stay away from this stuff as Christians. But, you know, sometimes it falls on deaf ears. Um, it's more like a character, I'd say, like Robert De Niro playing the devil in Angel Heart. or Super Al occult film, by the way. Right. Um, or Al Pacino in Devil's Advocate, Advocate another oh, super yeah. occult film. Yeah. Right. And uh, he said that he was raised in a religious family. Every Sunday, he went with his parents to church. He still goes to this day. But 3-6 gave him the chance to explore his dark, darker tendencies to tell his real-life story of chaos and violence through love, uh, through his love of horror, right? So the horror always leads to dark. I mean, it's all dark. So, you know, uh, let's see. Um, Satan worshiper or thug would be my profile. Wow. Read my file. This is lyrics now. I've been a, a mean child for a while within a mystic style. That's Paul's rap, right? And I can go on and on about that. Let me see if there's any interesting lyrics here. Uh, okay. During the song's chorus, a woman sounds like she's singing, you are God, you are King Lucifer. Um, this is a a, 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 a urban myth about one of their songs, okay? And so going down, you have another guy um, from having merchandise adorned with 666 and inverted crosses to the lyrical content. Tyler's two, uh, 2011 album, Go Goblin, which is a demon, is full of satanic references and groups, re groups references to Satan uh, were a topic of discussion on numerous forums during their rise. Um, let's see here, one of the lyrics, I believe this is, let me see, isn't that? There? Let's see, uh, lyrics on the title track, oh, that's a triple three six. Isn't he a devil worshiper? Cause I'm too effing ignorant to do 
some research. So anyway, some of these lyrics are just dumb, but <laughs> these are the people. I'm not going to stay too long on this. Uh, who is this? Shab uh, Shab Shababi? I had never heard of him before, but he's popular, I guess. Um, this is, uh, I think this is, let me see here. Uh, what's his name? Triple, triple, triple six, triple one, whatever. Anyway, I don't got time for this. This is the, some of these, some of these people, I just, I don't know these people, but you have little, little Uzi Vert. I think that might be who this is, or maybe he's next at, uh, I think that's who this is. Anyway, when you say his name fast enough, fast enough, you say Lucifer, little Uzi Vert. All right, that makes yeah, sense. Oh. yeah. So, um, not I'm not interested in any of these artists. I'm um, just done with this whole scene. But I'll be reporting on some of this later on in here behind the music. Here, have you ever heard of the band Ghost? Ghost. G H O S T. Look them up. Look up their imagery. It's a totally satanic band. I guess it's. And it's not pop. Look up uh, Ghost Band. Now, all their songs are about occultism, Hammer and Square, all this other stuff. Oh goodness! <laughs> yeah, and they dress up like uh, dress up like what do you call it? Like Kiss or something? Yeah. And you know what? Now yeah. that you mentioned Kiss, what do you know about them? Because I hear their name means knights and Satan service. service. I've heard that as well. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, listen, there's a there's a, um, a a documentary that all you guys need to see. I'll bring it up in a minute. But uh, go ahead and talk about this, and I'll bring up that documentary. Well, I, I don't honestly. I don't know much about this band. The reason I know them is because they just talk about Satanism. Every song has had some occult influence. Obviously, the design of their costumes and outfits and things like that, occultic, um, upside down cross, like you can see there. But yeah. I, I mean, I, I remember one. I can't remember. Can you come with me on the square? Is one of their lyrics like some kind of a cult thing? But you know, I, I can't say I've studied them in great detail. So, yeah. but I know. I mean, it's totally a cult band. Like, I'm just not interested in listening to that stuff. But uh, just kind of for my own frame of reference, I, I remember Ghost. Yeah, this uh, documentary right here. I recommend everybody look at this documentary. They have a four hour version, I think of six and a 10 hour version. Uh, a lot of the things that we talked about tonight are in this right, documentary. Sold, sold. Yeah, it's an excellent documentary. Excellent. Um, and and it, the, the person that, the group that pretty much put this together, they, um, they did incredible research on uh, Elvis, Black Sabbath, you name it, even Eminem and BMX and some of the people that were around at this time, early 2000s. It's a really good documentary. Uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. They, I haven't seen anyone else except for another one called Hell's Bells. They have Hell's Bells 1 and 2. Uh, that documentary is pretty good as well. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, well, right. Yeah. You want to talk about music, maybe not something very contemporary, but Liberace, who was like a flamboyant piano player, was supposed to be a member of the Church of Satan. Have you heard that? I haven't heard that, but I'm not yeah. surprised. Let me tell you, like, you know why. Why? I'm not surprised because I'm, I've been studying a little history on classical music. And it turns out that um, not maybe not all, you know, but but a lot of the the uh, famous ones are they were into Satanism uh, of sure. some type, you know. Sometimes they'd have the classical music uh, playing while you have the gesture, which is which is uh, pretty much a significance uh, of um, a demon. And what they would do is usher in the spirit for that party where they put the mask on. Oh, interesting! Like a mask party or ball, mask ball, masquerade ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I do know about Mozart is that the Magic Flute was a Masonic inspired opera. So one of Mozart's final, final works or final pieces was called Magic Flute. If you want to look that up, but that's supposed to be like fully Masonic. What was that called now? The Magic Flute. The magic Flute. Magic Flute. And that is a song. It's an opera. Opera. 
No, I think it's an opera. It's definitely it's Mozart, who, you know, they don't really say anything about occultism, but that's it, yeah. the magic flute. It's kind of good you, you bring this up because there's a, a show in Vegas called Soul, Soul Day or something like that. And it's totally new age. <laughs> totally new age. Uh, I, I've bought, I haven't been there, but I've read about it. Uh, you know, I look at the, the, uh, the advertisements and whatnot, but you could tell it's totally new age. So, you have so there's of- like a book called The Magic Flute Unveiled, Esoteric Symbolism in Mozart's Masonic Opera. Uh, magic flute has been described as an enlightenment allegory built in Masonic ritual. Wow! So, so so Mozart was part of the, part of the gang, too, huh? I mean, he's associated with it. Yeah, seems yeah. like it. And but he would. I, mean, I mean, he was so young when he died, too. So maybe his dad was, or he was just in that right. environment. I think it was Vienna, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring up a word that some people don't realize. I think it means hell. Yes, it's a it's a word for hell. Um, let's see here. Sticks. Sticks. Uh, sticks. Um, let me see. Hell. Yeah. Here's a here's a writing. Uh, San Francisco Opera Education. That magic, the magic flute is barely veiled Masonic allegory cannot be doubted. It acts, in fact, as a kind of introduction to the secret society. Oh, where is that? Let's show that. Show that. Uh, okay. let me show, yeah. So this is SF Opera. Can you see that? Is that uh, right here. Yeah, I just highlighted it. Okay. Again, it says the, that the magic flute is barely is a barely failed Masonic allegory cannot be doubted. It acts, in fact, as a kind of introduction to the secret society. Mm-hmm. The story celebrates the main themes of masonry, good versus evil, enlightenment versus ing- ignorance, and the virtues of knowledge, justice, wisdom, and truth. The evocation of the four elements, air, earth, fire, water, the injunction of silence in the Masonic ritual. So that you've got the whole role of silence. The figures of the bird, the serpent, and the padlock, as well as the rule of three, all play important roles in the plot or in the musical fabric of the opera. Three ladies, three boards, three loud chords, the beginning of the overture. All these symbols and characteristics come from Egyptian lore and the various original texts of masonry. Hence, the opera's libretto is set in Egypt, although many productions eschew that specification. Ah, uh, see? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I... Go. So, I mean, it goes back, right? So it's yeah. not like it's always been around. We just don't talk about it on the news, I guess. Yeah, I've um, pretty much I've, I've done a, a small, very small research on the, the classical music. But there's also a book out there about it. I can't remember the name right now. But if I do it, when I do another show on music, I'll try to remember to bring that up, guys. Uh, so thank you for that. And also here's this. Sticks, the river sticks. Right. Redirects here. Uh, from the band Styx, right? right? So in Greek mythology, Styx uh, is a deity and a river that forms the boundary between Earth and the underworld. The river, what's that? Archeron? That's, that's how you say that? Archeron? Yeah, Archeron. 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 Um, and all these other rivers. Uh, and Styx all converge at the center of the underworld on a great march, marsh, which sometimes is also called the Styx. According to Herodotus, the river Styx originates near Phineas. Styx is also a goddess with um, prehistoric roots in Greek mythology as a daughter of Tethys, that or Tethys, um, after whom the river is named and because of whom it had miraculous powers. So I think Stevie Nicks also had a song called Sticks, did she? I think Sounds so. probably. She's apparently yeah. very witchy. Yeah. Which yeah. influenced. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, this is all interesting, and it just shows you our culture, though. It shows you uh, the signs of the times, um, the, the, the thought sets within different ethnicities, and how pretty much the neo-pagan movement from starting from actually the 60s and 70s um, has grown 
that has legs and it's actually trying to sit in front of you every single day. It's true. It's very you know? true. Yeah. yeah. So, um, guys, you got any questions? Let us know. We, we might end this soon. Um, I don't see any. Let me see. Let me scroll back here to see if we have any questions. You already answered one. Well, you tried to answer the one. <laughs> answer the one. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see one there. We already said. Any questions? Let us know. Uh, yeah, it's all fascinating stuff, man. But uh, DMX, DMX. Uh, for people that don't know who DMX is, he's Dark Man X. Dark Man X, and he had a ton of hits on the Rough Rider Records. And let me look up. The I remember record. DMX. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, well, uh, supposedly he had got on some crack or whatnot, and now he's supposed to be a minister of the gospel. I'm not sure how true that is. I've seen one or two videos, but you know, uh, you, you, you did, all, all, I would, all I would say, I won't, I won't make a assessment now, but just actions speak a lot too, you know? So, Agreed. this album right here. Fle uh, flesh of my flesh. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened to that guy. Yeah, he was big in in um mid late nineties and stuff and early two thousands. Uh, and on this album is where he said, um, I can't say the lyrics to in totality. Let's just put it this way: he he rapped about necrophilia, and he said he had blood on his man part, and he did something with a corpse. Okay, so. I if he's changed, he's changed. I guess I don't know, right? But he's not putting out a lot of records today. But most of his stuff was pretty much he would he would open prayer with prayer on his album and with prayer sometimes. But he always it's like he had two persona persona that duality that that you find in mainstream and other places, right? And um, pretty much. You you could find a lot of a lot of bad um, uh, subject matter on his albums, right? I had most. I had the uh, the first one, the second one, the third one, and that I had the fourth one too. But that's where I stopped. Um, you know, Dark Man X. Yeah. You know? So that's what that stands for, Dark Man X. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's it. Yeah, makes, makes perfect Dark sense. Man X. Yeah. And um, as we go more into these programs, I'll be given some audio snippets or whatnot, something that the people say, because people, a lot of people don't understand that hip hop, well, rap is poetry, just like any songwriting, right? And there, there, there are ways that, there, there, okay, there's a, there's a method to hide subject matter within the lyrics. If you aren't from that culture or from that hood or that, um, certain ghetto you won't get it because they use the slang but within the slang they'll cover it up by using other slang that they make up you know uh, i used to be a rapper well still am in a christian way but uh i didn't i never made it a point to hide my my intentions in the music right so that's one of the things about uh rap that a lot of people don't understand and i'm gonna try my best to uh expose some of that stuff and it's not it's not a it's not a, a thing of demonizing, you know, rap music, but the culture is not cohesive to Christianity. <laughs> it's just not. So um, let me see here if we have any questions. No. But I'll tell you one thing before we end. Uh, you just got to, in your personal walk with Jesus, you got to be careful what you're listening to, even Christian music. Okay. You have Bethel music. You have Hillsong. Any people don't understand why Hillsong is so bad? Uh, and and listen, they have great writers. I can't. I can't. I can, you, you you can't take away the talent. But uh, there's a lot a lot of new age in there. Uh, a lot of um, twisting of scripture and whatnot. So you you want to be careful of the stuff that you're putting in. Even Lauren Daigle, she's questionable as well. Um, Who's the person you're talking about? Lauren Daigle. Lauren Daigle. I don't know. Yeah, she, uh, let me look her up real quick. Uh, I mean, Hillsong, they just had, I mean, they have a lot of scandals, but one of the lead guys just got punted, right? Lentz. 
I, I don't know. know. I, I stopped, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think his name was Lentz. They were up to no good. They were doing bad stuff. He was up to more. He, got, I think they had a story that he would, you know, I don't want to get into it, but it's bad. He'll song, there's some corruption there for sure. Yeah. In my, in my opinion. Yeah. Now I'm I'm not gonna say a lot of no there's definitely a lot of corruption in Hillsong I, I okay. that would take maybe one or two shows to actually talk. okay okay um their their um pastor in Australia he said that um Jesus our God and the, and the God God of Islam is the same it's, oh no so no no I wouldn't touch I wouldn't even trust anything Hillsong said just on that statement <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, and and Bethel Church comes out of, of the a the NAR movement, the new it Apostolic does Reformation. Yes, I had no idea. Oh no, yeah. Hillsong yeah. is no, yeah, no Christian should ever go to Hillsong. Please, yeah. Yeah. get a Bible and read it yourself. It's much and better. and that and that's so you got his Hillsong and you have Bethel Church, Reading, California. Those two right there. It's are they both NAR? Is Hill is Bethel NAR? Bethel is definitely an AR. Oh, okay. no, no, no. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. See, this so, is like, I come on your show. I learn more from you. <laughs> my own stuff. I didn't know that. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, Sorry, that changed a lot of insight things for me. Sorry. Wow. I haven't, because since I was in Bible college and I took a break now, I wasn't able to report on all this stuff. And it's some, it's some damning evidence, evidence out there for this, man. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I stay away. I listen. I used to. I wasn't like a a person that would uh, pretty much swallow a lot of Hillsong hill music, but I started hearing stuff about them around probably about seven or eight eight years ago, and um, I started being more cautious. But I, I liked Oceans, that that song Oceans, and there's some other songs I like too. And then sometimes when I'm flipping through a, a, a playlist. I'm like, that song sounds good. Who is that? My daughter will say Hillsong. I'm like, oh really? <laughs> you know? So. Uh, I've seen some of their productions in, in the Holy Land. They're nice. I mean, they're good productions, good music. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. It's like if, if Satan's going to pervert, corrupt something, he's not going to bore you to death. He's going to bring something to you that appeals to you. Like It's just like how a lot of people are, even Christians, are drawn towards uh, dark metal music. They just are. You know, I don't know if it's something that they don't want to give up, but they bring that into the the whole Christian um you know, format as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a person that's to each his own. I'm not that re uh, more relativism per person, but there's a, there's a thin line of, of, of legalism. You know what I mean? But I, I just think that if something is super dark, I don't think God has anything to do with that. No. Really? I don't think so, too. You know, so, so uh, this is Lauren Daigle. Um, I'm not going to say much about her now, but one of the big things about her is she would not, Say that homosexuality is a sin. On it's not biblical, yeah, that's for sure. Right, and um, I'm hearing whispers. I cannot prove it. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you what I've heard is that she supposedly said that she's a Catholic. I don't know if she if that's true. I just have to search it out. Um, so if anybody wants to search that out, you can as well. Uh, I like both of her albums, but when she started slipping and sounding more like she wants to be a friend friend of the world and all this stuff. It, then I started questioning her, and then when she made that statement on the radio program about the, she, you know, God will have to be the judge of that. And I'm like, huh? Come on, are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible? It's obvious. So people like to placate with the with the secular audience because they know the secular audience know why they're asking the question. So you should know why they're asking the question. And so, you know, I think she's she's um, surrounded by people of all these different lifestyles. And so she doesn't want to upset them. And that's a problem because friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's what the Bible says. That's the truth, yeah. Right? So even, yes. yeah, even with Christian music, you have to be careful. Um, there's a lot. Okay, there was a guy. Can't remember his name right now. Reported on it around 2016. He he used to run around. I think he was, was, was uh, like a stage, uh, one of those guys that set up the stages. And he would do all these tours for these uh, these Christian artists. And then I believe what happened is he tried to murder his wife and then he went to prison. And yeah, so, I heard about the guy. Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. In prison, he, he gave the report that he, when he was traveling with all these people, he said, 
99% of them are not Christians. Wow. He hung out them that much that he, you know, obviously you have conversations, you have these parties and whatnot. So you start to figure it out. And I remember when I, this is around 2007, eight ish. I started listening to more Christian music and my favorite uh, band was uh, Cast and Crown. I have nothing bad to say about them. That's, that was just my, the, where I started to, you know, get my, um, my liking again for a lot of Christian music. And so anyway, I started pick up, picking up some new bands and then I started seeing occult symbols on these like uh, Third Day and some of these other groups. I'm like, why are these occult symbols on these albums? So you start figuring what, a couple of things out. Like some of these guys cannot be, um, you know, they can't belong to Christ if they're using this stuff. So what happens is they pretty much say that they didn't make it in the secular world. Uh, and then they, they, they take the Christian genre because it's, it's, it's not overcrowded. Right. And they make it there and they make a lot of money. All you have to do is write a good song and right. inject Jesus here, inject Jesus there. And right. there you go. And that's even if they inject Jesus in it. Right. 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 <laughs> and they make, they make a ton of money. And no, it's a good point. Didn't they just have a really prominent Christian musician just say that he didn't believe yeah. anything he was singing about? Yeah, and I, I can't remember his name because I didn't yeah, I, I never remember. listened to him. But yes, he uh he uh, you that that's a pattern. Ever since the mid uh two thousands or probably even before that, these Christian artists are denouncing their faith, falling right. away. Right? right? And if so, they ever really had it, right? Right, like exactly, said. right, yeah, yeah. If they ever really had it. Right. So uh I, I, I'm just, I just want to give that clarion call, man. <laughs> no, it's important. It's yeah. important. I mean, sometimes they're just some of these Christian songs are so like sugary sweet. It's like I just don't I don't care. I, I really much more classical Christian hymns for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's 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 a very slippery slope nowadays. And what I'm finding out is a lot of them sound the same. A lot. Okay. And there's no substance, no substance. When I uh, recorded my song four months ago, there, there was a, a deep message that I'm trying to put out about transhumanism, hybridization of humanity, um, ID2020 and all this stuff that we found out, some of it after COVID, right? That's the whole song. It's not about trying to make you feel good. <laughs> You know, or I'm and I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the book of Revelation. It's a serious message. Um, right. not that every song has to be that, but these people they don't want to mention Jesus, or they'll say he or Lord, right, or you, <laughs> you know, it, that's all they want to mention, and that that's so they, they can placate to the audience, right? Don't feel bad about your sin, you know, well, whoever you worship, he. Lord, whatever, that's the one covering you. Right. And yeah, as somebody said down at the bottom, Lecrae as well. Yes, I believe Lecrae is problems. He he um pretty much wants to be a friend of the world. I I what I'm seeing now though, since I think he was signed to Atlantic or somebody. Anyway, he left that label, but the way he talked in his interview sounded like he saw some things, you know. And I, you know, I don't know if he saved or not. I'm just saying he has problems. And I've been seeing it for years. And a lot of the younger folks are like, Lecrae, Lecrae, Lecrae. He's so wonderful. I mean, he has talent, but you know, I I'm not, I wasn't drawn to his music. Let's put it that way. So yeah, it's it's very troubling to me that we're at this point where we cannot recognize authentic Christian music. Now, whether you like casting crowns or not, they mention Jesus all the time. It's always uplifting. It's always biblical. It's always focused on the gospel, you know? Um, and somebody tried to say that their album cover, um, what is it called? My favorite album, I can't remember right now because I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, what is it called? Give me a second here. Thrive, right? I'm going to dispel something really quick. It's uh, about their album cover, and I'll show it to you. It's called Thrive, uh, and 
Why won't this thing move? Get in there. Come on now. There we go. All right. Somebody tried to say that this is the Kabbalah tree of life. It's not. It's not. There's a there's a theme behind this, and it's about an oak tree that is watered at the bottom, but you can't see it. And what happens, it thrives through the water, which they're kind of um, saying it's the Holy Spirit. If you're, it's a, you know, allegory. And you, you see the oak tree and it's pretty much thriving at the top, but at the bottom, you can't see the roots and what's watering it, right? And right. so it's not the Kabbalah tree of life. It's not, you know, I've, I've listened to the album over and over and there's no occult references. <laughs> so um, hopefully they don't slide on the Catholic bandwagon like a lot of groups are. A lot of them are not meeting with the Pope um, or putting Catholic messages message in there, or maybe they're Catholic, I don't know. You know, you, you get all sorts of uh, run over uh, when it comes to these groups. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, I don't know a lot about modern Christian rock. I, I, I wish I could provide you with some uh, edifying comments, but I really don't know. I don't know much about them. No, it's okay because some stuff you're talking about, I don't know, and I'm learning too, you know? So, well, that's I, good. That's, that's the way it should be. Still learning. I'm still learning for yeah. sure. Uh, the, uh, Dean Carter. Dean Carter always has some controversial man. <laughs> he says, um, "Casting crowns. They might not be Freemasons, but I can bet the management is. Uh, C is third letter in English alphabet. F, F M use the alphabet as code. C equals three. They use the first letter and names as the code carrier. The C C or thirty three highest level in Freemasonry. That's not a, that's not by chance. I mean, listen." We can make something out of everything. You know, my name is Hurricane Seven. You can put the, put the numerology on my name and say it comes out to whatever you, you think. You know, I don't have proof for that. I need proof. You know, uh, just like how uh, computer, when you do the numerology number on computer, it comes out to 666. But that that the, the computer isn't the Antichrist, <laughs> you know, and right. it, and it doesn't necessarily lead to the Antichrist, but it but the technology might, you know, but it's the number of a man, the number of a man. The Bible is clear. There's some other stuff that come out to six 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 as well. So I don't I don't play the numerology games games all the time, except for when I have uh, some rock solid proof, like Joe Biden's number, <laughs> that um. Equals six 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 uh three zero three three whatever it was, the number to to, to text them to vote. Oh really? Well, that was six six six. I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. So all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I don't know who came up with the band name Cast and Crown. It could have been them. It could have been the company. I don't know. I need to search it out. You know. But as far as I know, as far as I know, they've been totally on point this whole time. Also, uh, yes, the companies that they sign with, oh yeah, they're definitely not. What the what the major record, record labels did is pretty much um, they they bought up all the small gospel labels. They just gobbled them up. Interesting. You know Google is gobbling up this, and Facebook is gobbling up that. That's what the major record labels did. So you hardly have any independent labels anymore. They're, they're there, but a lot of the old gospel ones are gobbled up. So that's why you'll see a group like Cast and Crown or whoever, name the, name the group, if they're real, sign into Sony, sign into Arista, sign into all these labels uh, that are owned by pretty much statements. Interesting. Do you know who Cast and Crowns, who their uh, company is? Uh, let me see here. I forget. Uh, it's... Uh, da, 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 da. I see the dog on there. It looks like Sony. So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I think they generate a lot of money, right? Casting Crowns sold tons of albums. Well, here's the thing about Casting Crowns that that'll surprise you: their revenue is going down every time they release an album. I checked that out last year. Yeah, it's Sony. It's Sony. Career yeah. sales have exceeded 10 million records. That's a lot of money. Let's see. Um, Provident Label Group, a division of Sony Music. Right. Yeah. So Provident is probably their Christian label, right? Yeah. Christian imprint. Yeah. And so, and with the music industry, there's a. Let me see, I forgot to show it to people. <laughs> forgot to show you guys. Here we go. That's the album cover, and that's the label right there. Uh, Sony, whatnot. Right. So, um, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> I have to go back so to we're that. We're just talking ownership of uh, Christian. 
Christian bands, how they're all absorbed into a larger corporate system. Yeah. Corporate yeah. System. And, and the, 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 the music industry on a whole, it's a machine. Okay. All those music and, in the, yeah, right. It's a money. It's all about money, right? Yeah. And so, if don't care. yeah, if you're a Christian and you want to go into, to do gospel music, um, or whatever one you, you want to label it and you, it belongs to Christ, it's it's not an easy road, especially if you're weak in your flesh. I don't care if you're doing secular music or gospel music, there's fornication in there, okay? Because it's a system that, oh, put, let me put it this way. You can have the least amount of fame to the highest amount. It always comes with the territory. So you have to be sold out to Jesus. And these people are still going to try to get you to sign your name in blood. Maybe not every label, but it's it's popular. It's something that happened to Mark Dice and some other people. They tried, and there was another guy, uh, uh, Indian dude. When I say Indian, I mean Native, Native American, uh, that gave his testimony in my pastor's church. And he he was going to, uh, him and his group were going to go very far. So they went to the record label. I can't remember the, the, the label right now. Um, I, I'm not even sure if he mentioned it. But they went into a room, and it was a white room that you hear about, like from people like Tom, Tom, um, John Todd or whatnot. And they pretty much said, "You're gonna, you, we need you to sign your name in blood, and you know the devil and all this stuff." And so, don't think it's not real; it's real. Yeah, I heard Drake went through something like that. Like he went through some like, huge initiation. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he's wearing the owl. He's wearing, he's wearing Molek. Yeah. You know, um, some some of these guys, the initiation is not necessarily signing your name in blood. It's setting you up to do an act of sex uh, or they'll get you to, to get drunk or uh, take drugs. And the next minute, if you're a man, uh, you wake up and you feel some pain down in the nether regions <laughs> and what? you want to happen. Well, that's what I, that's what I heard happened to Drake. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, wow. no, I have to look that back up. I read something about. Yeah. Yeah. It was about homosexual acts, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me, though. You know, little, little Wayne talked about uh, some interesting things have, having to do, to do with baby when he was younger. I was like, okay, that's weird that you're talking about this. Uh, so the, the acts of debauchery when it comes to the music industry, there's no, even the, listen, any of the industries, there's no end to it. Once you start hanging around with the wrong people, you know, uh, you have to have your guards up, especially when it comes to contracts as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's it's a nasty, nasty industry. I'm not signed with anybody. I put out my own music. Those uh, contracts are bl uh, they're vicious, man. They yeah. all always are for the label's benefit, and well, the, the distribution of knowledge and power is very unequal because typically the musicians are not hard-headed negotiators right. and the labels are just about as bloodthirsty yeah. and ruthless as you can imagine. Right. So if and they think they can make money off you, man, they will tie you up for five years. The stories yeah. of artists trying to get out of contracts are legion. And that's kind of what I, when I practiced law, that's what I did in contracts. I said, never sign anything over a year. Just don't do it. I yeah. don't care what your contract, but if you're signing anything over a year, I know it's not really on topic, but just don't do it because things could change like you couldn't believe. No, no, it's fine. One album contract, get out, start over, yeah. renegotiate it, do it again. Don't sign yeah. a long-term contract, baby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, it, it's on topic to a degree because they, these people, some of them don't make it anywhere and they still get raped. <laughs> and I'm not talking about figuratively, okay? It they probably get, feels literal, but yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> they still get passed around, especially the females. Nowadays, probably both male and females, uh, they get passed around to rich people or people that are in between, and you would be shocked at the stories that are told um, that happen to people that you think are right on point. And one, they don't have any money. They look like they have money, but they really don't. Uh, they've been raped probably multiple times, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's a wicked, wicked industry, and and most people that are going and are young and naive, they don't want to read. They're not pushed to read anything, so they go in um, unlearned. They don't know about contracts. They don't know about money. They don't know about uh, royalties. 
mechanical royalties, all the technical terms that I can that oh. can shoot oh. off. Oh. And they're just happy that they're going to be rich. Right. They think they're going to be rich, right? They've been sold at their dream. Some of them, I mean, that happens to book publishers, somebody who published their own book. Book publishing is just as bad, man. You could sell yeah. away some hard five books uh, for nothing, you know. Right. But uh, talk, going back to Jimi Hendrix, it's actually kind of a famous case that's talked in law schools is the case of his dad selling off Jimi Hendrix full. I mean, once Jimi Hendrix died, the ownership of his music went to his father. And his father wasn't very sophisticated. So somebody came in and offered him uh, like $100,000 for the full catalog of Jimi Hendrix recording, which was worth incredible sums of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And the Hendrix senior took it. He just thought it was a great deal because he had money in his hand. And some lawyer said, hey, man, you just did a terrible deal. And it was yeah. actually one of the few contracts that's overturned due to uh, unconscionability, which is a legal standard where the inequality of the negotiants is so outrageously different that uh, the judge will just say, no, this contract is null and void. So a lot of the really powerful record companies, book companies, make sure that they're in an advantageous position when negotiating a contract, but not too advantageous because it could potentially be, if it's really onerous, um, yeah. it could be, it could be overturned. And some of these, they're actually done like uh, some of the early Aerosmith records, they don't even own. So the stuff you hear on the radio that somebody's making, they're not even making a penny on some of those songs like Sweet Emotion and stuff. They sold it off from the very early to their producer and they got a pittance for it and they went to court and lost. Yeah. And so you got to really be careful. Look at look at Taylor Swift. She's going through that. They are, a lot of them are man. A lot of them get terrible deals. There's just not great deals for artists. If you can yeah. sell your own stuff, do it. It's the way to go if yeah. you can. Uh, the one particular thing I, I I can't necessarily prove it, but it's interesting, right? So Michael Jackson was about to own his masters, right? And he bought the masters for the Beatles. Did you know that? Right. Yes, I was yeah. familiar with that. Yeah. And. For a substantial he, sum, like 70 million bucks or something like that. And before he died, he didn't get his master's. Interesting. Michael Jackson. Guess who else that happened to? Don't know. I don't know. Prince. Prince, right. Prince was in uh, fighting with his record company forever. I think he had, like, I mean, these guys have litigation that you just never want to get involved in. If you did not sign that contract, you wouldn't be in like you're you these guys don't anticipate they could be in litigation for like five or ten years. Right, yeah. And and a lot of these guys that you see that are moguls in the music industry, they are straight up gangsters. Gangsters and flamers. Okay. Oh, uh and they don't care. It's a, it's about power. Right. Yeah. And they'll they'll get these. Uh, metrosexual looking males and have them do all sorts of stuff. I just can't mention, <laughs> you know. And uh, again, what's the price for fame? It goes back to this idea of selling your soul to the devil, which which is a misnomer because you can't really sell your soul to the devil if you already lost and headed to hell anyway. So the devil puts up this thing in front of you that sell your soul to me, uh, God is not real, and all this stuff, and you know, these people fall for it. But some of them, uh, going back to the ori or, or, or original topic, the, the cult in the culture, in the music industry, a lot of these people already worship demons. Okay? I'll, I'll shoot out a name for you. Azalea Banks. She practices right. brewería, right? And she showed on YouTube uh, the closet, the right? Closet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we didn't even touch Lady Gaga, man. <laughs> That's one of the names we're supposed to touch tonight. Lady Gaga. Um, she, it's obvious what she is. Um, and she's, she's pals with Abramovich, right? Say that one more time. She's pals with Abramovich, right? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she's like a mentor to her. And she's straight up, straight up Satanist. Straight up. Uh, uh, Straight cool. up, all the imagery, all the stuff is all occult. Um, we touched on Beyonce, um, who, who talks about a, a Sasha Fierce, but she doesn't use that anymore. I don't think. I don't think. 
but it's a spirit that comes into her. That's her words. It comes into me. Okay. So you have that. You have, um, what's the one, uh, the, the young lady that got famous about eight years ago, uh, from, I think she's from Jersey. Uh, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, right. Nicki Minaj. She, uh, her spirit is called Roman. So we have Sasha Fierce, we have Roman, we have Rain Man. Rain Man, right. Right? So uh, who else? Uh, I'm not sure about the, the one that can't speak English. <laughs> I'm being facetious. Uh, Cardi, Cardi, Cardi B. Cardi B, right, yeah. But she came, she, her whole industry there, where she came from, the strippers and all this stuff and robbing people, that whole thing is is, is satanic anyway. It, it, it might not seem so in other people's eyes, but Satan has been human, using women to dance and sell their bodies for a long time. So um, I'm not sure about her and her spirituality. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's something weird there. Uh, you have, oh, Aesop Rocky. He shows the pentagram. Uh, in his music videos, and you have uh, some some are more blatant than others. Um, and I haven't, I don't really follow a lot of these guys. Um, you have new ones out now that I couldn't tell you the name if I tried. So this whole system, guys, this is what this series is about: the spirit behind the music. And we're going to go into Egyptology, more on Crowley. Um, somebody, I, hey, somebody said me and you should do the series every week. <laughs> yeah, we should. You know, just to follow up, one thing we didn't mention is this guy, Peter Christofferson, that's from my first documentary about the Smiley Face Killers. But he yeah. was a flat-out Crowley lover, a member of the Illuminates of Thanateros, and he was directing videos for just huge artists. Rage Against the Machine, Drawber Plant, some very underground artists, but like Hanson, some funky things. But yeah. this is a hard, like literal black magician, like somebody who that was their religion. And homosexual too, and yeah. all kinds of like coprophilia, like things you just like. <laughs> but who knows what kind of deals and what relationships he had? And he did that stuff for on Nine Inch Nails too. But oh, yeah, how yeah. that negotiation? Like, I want that guy as my director. I want that guy as my film director. Yeah. Do you know what he's doing? Like, I mean, it's just incredible. So you talk about another element of occultism. Maybe not even the musician, but the people who are directing some of those videos. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. You, you know what? Yeah, we need to come back and do this stuff because yeah. that's another thing that people don't realize. The music videos, it's not always the artist that requests requests the the, the, the setting or the right. make right. or the one eye over. Don't take a screenshot and say I'm Illuminati now. Um, <laughs> or hand over the eye and all that stuff, right? Right. Sometimes it's the artist behind the video, right? Right. So we, we're, we're kind of like um, not looking at it clearly, okay? Uh, just like the fashion designer that the, the, she he, he or she designed Beyonce's Super Bowl um, um, clothing and our outfit, and it was a pentagram there on her chest, the one where she kind of morphed into like this demon-looking dude, right? If you didn't see that, go look at, uh, what, what was that, 2014 Super Bowl? I think 2014. Yeah. So go look that up and you'll see. Uh, in fact, uh, what's it called? Um, there's a ministry that did a real good video on it. I don't necessarily hold to everything they believe, but uh, that video is pretty good. Uh, Goodfight.org. They have a YouTube channel. Go look up their, their, their Beyonce video on the Super Bowl and I think you'll be blown away. So, anyway, yes, we there's a lot of topics to cover. Uh, All right. Yeah. Here's another one we forgot is Jimmy Page and the mega occult ritual at the Olympics in China. That was incredible. Uh, was yeah. Singing a whole lot of love with that other musician, female. Uh, I can't remember her name, but yeah, no, it was incredible. Like in front of a billion people are watching, right? Yeah. Yeah. The true mega ritual. It's a true, like, incredible, cruelly, excuse me, cruelly follower. You know, mega ritual televised more people than the Super Bowl, probably. You know, yeah. I I mean, people don't realize the Super Bowl halftime show is now a, a ritual, right? It, it was not the same as it was back in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> totally different right. now. Uh, they they toned it down a little bit this last Super Bowl, but it still had problems. 
Um, I'm going to show. They're, they're pushing the envelope as much as possible. The occultists. Yeah. So. Especially when they're hemorrhaging audiences. Right? right. And so then if you want to push the show, we should probably promote the show. We're going to do the 16th, if you don't mind. Sure. I can do it. So uh, me and Chris are going to talk about The Great Reset by Klaus Schwab. We're going to read the book. And that's also kind of like the push forward because Klaus Schwab is a be believer in the fourth economic revolution, which is about transhumanism. It's about kind of the transformation of mankind. So if anybody's interested in prepping or reading that book, it's five bucks on Kindle. Then you could offer your comments or insights uh, when we have that conversation on the 16th of December. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to actually bring up the book in a second to show them, but I want to mention next week's show and show you guys the graphics for it uh, right here. Spirit Behind the Music, episode two, it's hip hop. I'm gonna break, break down some things about the culture and what you thought you knew, but you don't know, right? And so that's um, that show. And um, let me look up the Klaus Schwab before we sign off here. Okay. Because I can guarantee some people like who? <laughs> right. Well, some people, but it's very important because they're talking about the Great Reset at the very top. He's part. He started the World Economic Forum, so he's he associates with a lot of big wigs, and uh, I think it's important to see because there could be something like a reset in the future, and what that entails could be have a disastrous, far-ranging effects on human beings. Now, as we kind of slouch human. towards Bethlehem or the New World Order, whatever you want. Yeah. New, uh, what do you call it? Human 2.0. I've been bringing this up for a while. Mm -hmm. um, bring, I'm looking for the book really quick here. I have it on my computer. Schwab. In fact, I might have two versions of it or more. S-C-H-W-A-B. Uh, yeah. I got it here. This thing would actually work here. Come on now. Anyway, I'm going to copy this and... Uh, there we are, Klaus Schwab. This is the, oh, give me a second here. I'm gonna show you guys what he looks like. When it comes to this New World Order stuff, this guy's the man. Um, Global Reset, Fourth Industrial Revolution, and all that. That's him right there. Klaus Schwab, the fourth industrial revolution. What he's talking about there is um, technoc technocracy, tech ruling everything, them owning everything. It's it's the, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, no, it's something else. Like, and there's no Christian doctrine in that book. It's all about humanism. Uh, you're right, technocracy, transhumanism, people yeah. tied into the system. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the, the peace system prophesied in Revelation, and this is somebody who kind of wants, it seems like, he's selling it with the kind of sugar coating, like it's all for your benefit. I think yeah. that's why it's important to actually read the details. I have not read the book in its entirety, but I think it's important for everybody to know, Christians particularly, to see what he's thinking. Also, that's his earlier book, is the fourth Industrial Revolution, right. but it, yeah. that book informs the Great Reset. Right. Uh, and and uh, you, you must look at the Great Reset. I've been telling you guys this for weeks, though, on Reign of the Tech. Look up the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Look up the Great Reset. Also look into Lockstep. If you haven't done that homework yet, you need to do the homework. Okay? It's, it's one of the only ways you're going to understand what's going on in the world right now. And uh, if you haven't got a lot of insight on the mystery schools or what we would say the occult secret societies you want to do at least some homework on that because that's the other way you're going to understand what's going on in the world you can't understand it any other way okay so with that we are going to close out thanks for joining us this was a very long show but i i, I think we did a really good job in trying to uh giving you some details who to look up who to look into uh, if we were to give you every, all the information, this would be a 10 hour show. So <laughs> um, I just want to thank you guys in the chat for giving your comments and also participating and give this the, the video a, a thumbs up and a like. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We got a ton of stuff coming 
in the next two week at two weeks. And I'll like you said, I'll be on his channel on the what sixteenth? Sixteenth, uh, five p.m. Pacific. All right, so that's William Ramsey investigates. Go over there, subscribe. It's gonna be a good show. Uh, we're gonna pull out some stuff that you probably don't even realize going on with these guys, man. So yeah, very important, very important. All right. So um, uh, again, if you're a Christian, please spread the good news about Jesus Christ, also known as the gospel, and don't let them burn. Amen.